Your shadows from my soul as these walls begin to fall. Head lost in the silence, cold stars illuminate the secrets on your tongue and the poison in my lungs.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Talent League. I'm your lovely host for the evening and sem semi-regular caster at this point, Leo. And uh, tonight joining me, the lovely Hades for his first time. How are you doing, Hades? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. And today we're going to have a lovely match. Hopefully we're going to have a good match and not a stomp. Uh, who do we have tonight? We have Noetic and QVG Academy. All right. Yeah. Um, and the standings well, are, well, like, Noetic's third place, uh, three points, and QVG Academy are one point in uh, sixth place. Or tied sixth place. Fifth. Yeah, Looking these like are... A tough battle. Definitely, definitely a tough battle today. Yep, these are our standings right now. So we have the third place team against the sixth place team for tonight. And I mean, we might have actually a close matchup today. Um, let's look at their Maybe. win loss and previous results. Yeah. Yep. It looks like uh, Noetic already beat in a 2 0 fashion Hyferion, which are actually. Not supposed to be a bad team here in the league. I know right now they're in eighth, in eighth spot, but uh, hopes were high for Ethereum for that game. And Air Revolution, they're actually, uh, sorry, QVG, actually uh, on the one, one to one with Air Revolution here with AR. So basically, they took one map in a dominant seven one fashion here, and, and Arrow, yeah, yeah lo took it seven three. So we have Cafe and Villa. All right, let's just look at the player stats here on the Noetic side. Some uh, beastly looking stats here. Very, uh, very, seem like very dominant players. You've got the uh, Skies with the 24 to 11 uh, KD uh, with a kill, uh, chaos. I'm not particularly sure what chaos means, not my bad. Uh, well, it's like that 69%. Hit, uh, hit, uh, Kill per round, you got 1.11, which is actually quite a lot of kills per round. Uh, I myself, uh, quite bad. I have like a 0.7 or 8. <laughs> but, you know, like, comparatively to, uh, of course, Skies and Cracks over here. Look, I'm, I'm looking terrible <laughs> in comparison to them. But they're looking very good right now. Uh, with the... Is it a headshot ratio? Or a headshot percentage? Or is that a... Um, it, headshot, yeah, mind. there's yeah, definitely a headshot ratio there. <laughs> Most players are above 50, and I mean, so very Kito big with ratio. that 68% headshot ratio doing a great job there. And I mean, Skies with that great uh, KD differential and uh, 3 to 4 entry. I mean, not ideal, but not bad for your Ash player, I guess. He's mm -hmm. definitely opening up some rounds, right? Exactly. And I mean, yeah, definitely dominant stats all over across the board, as you would expect from them, right? They 2-0 the Hyferian last uh, game, previous time, in a very dominant fashion. 7-2 on Oregon and 7-3 on Villa. And speaking about maps, it's taking us to the map bends. And uh, what what maps are we playing today? We're playing Clubhouse and Cafe. Uh, Cafe. So two maps I'd know very, very well in comparison to the rest. Uh, I'm not surprised to see Coastline Band uh, or uh, Chalet, both very annoying maps. When it comes down to it, a lot of, uh, especially with the new remake of, well, it's a new remake, the old remake of Chalet, a lot of different angles, and still some people have to try and learn uh, after all the time has been made. But Coastline, definitely one of those maps which a lot of people struggle with. Uh... Yeah, definitely. And we have Cafe today, which uh, actually QVG lost pretty hard last time around against Era Revolution. Mm. And I don't think. Uh, Noetic actually didn't play it. So I think both of these teams didn't play either of these maps. Not both uh, of them, no. They just have Cafe on, uh, on QVG. Yeah, yeah, yeah just QVG played that. Cafe, but yeah. lost it pretty hard. But I don't think Noetic yeah. played either of these maps. So we're definitely going to see some new stuff, uh, new stuff from them, right? Mm. Fresh, uh, fresh plays and stuff. So yeah, well, yeah, actually definitely. Know the map. Oh. It's I mean, yeah, it looks like uh, Noetic definitely wanted to go to Cafe as it was their pick. Um, I mean, I'm expecting a, a pretty good performance on there from Noetic, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, ju just uh, 
thinking about the fact that they already have the VOD and everything, you know, it just changes the game so much when you have information on the other team. And if the other team doesn't change their strategy around, they don't change their strats too much, or maybe their roles, uh, they get pretty easy to read, especially on Cafe, right? It's a map that doesn't change too much. Definitely doesn't change. I mean, I still remember Trey Museum from when it, was first, when it first came out. Practically, it's almost exactly the same. Every time, it's, every, uh, every time it's slightly tweaked or anything, it's always the same. Always the same angles. Never difficult to really push into. Sometimes. Yeah, it's really hard to attack, and most teams tend to play it in a kind of a, let's say, in a similar way. Uh, it doesn't change too much. Mm -hmm. So once you know exactly how a team likes to play, I think uh, it's very easy to read them. But I mean, we're gonna see, right? Definitely gonna see. Uh, and that takes us to the community vote. I, our final bit, I hope, here, before we head straight to the game. And it looks like it's a pretty dominant 65% for Noetic here and a 31% for QVG. A 4% draw. Very, yeah. very draw. They've got a very uh, Noetic-sided uh, fan base, right? <laughs> they, they've seen the stats. They've seen the stats. I mean, Noetic is the more uh, known team in the community. Mm -hmm. And the one that I heard of the most from either of these teams, right? Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense when uh, when a community vote just sways so much towards the team that is a bit more known. But it doesn't actually mean anything usually uh, because, you know, the community vote doesn't take into account what, what maps they're going to play or anything like that. So uh, it's either it's anyone's game, if I, like as far as I'm concerned. And, I mean, we're going to see. I'm hoping for a close game here. And... Not a one-sided game here, as we do have those sometimes. Um, you know, just not as interesting to watch. Teams are ready. Right, and it, looks ready. Like, yeah, it looks like the teams are ready here on both sides, and we're going to hop straight into the game here, uh, and straight into the operator phase. And we're going to start in a cafe, on a club here, as Noetic is going to start on defense. Banning phase. First ban yeah, is... What do you think about uh, the bans on this map on club? Like, what, what do you expect usually? I mean, what, I, what I've seen a lot of in uh, pub games, of course, everyone hates playing against Clash, but Clash isn't that popular of a ban these days. Uh, but you can always see a Clash ban. Uh, a lot of different cameras, potentially, you might want to maybe Twitch. I was going to say uh, Thatcher's always a good ban because he needs the most amount of uh, control over the map in terms of electronic and stuff blowing up most of the electronics uh, and meaning that uh, vision on the map is going to be very, very uh, small for the attackers. Uh, yeah, Thatcher definitely. Kinda... I mean, Thatcher is that popular ban that you usually expect, right? You just you just kind of know that Thatcher is going to be banned, usually by the defenders as well. Like they're, I feel like he has like a 99% ban rate. I mean, I don't know. Like I don't think that's a statistic, but I mean, well, that's how it feels like every single game. There's a Thatcher ban, and usually it just comes from the defenders. Like the the first ban, just on defense, it comes it comes a uh, there's there comes a Thatcher ban, and usually just because most teams are just practicing without it, right? So they don't want to take that risk of actually leaving the Thatcher open. Oh, maybe we ban something else on the defense here, and you mm -hmm. know all of all of our utility we will need to change all of our utility and how we play it, right? Because like in practice, you stack ADSs somewhere and get used to it, and then a Thatcher just comes in. You know, really EMPs play. that one spot and you, it's just not viable anymore. You get naded out of that spot immediately and you got to rethink your whole strat, right? So it's just for yeah. comfort at this point. It's just like a year or so, maybe even more, that teams are consistently banning Thatcher. And there's the Hibana ban as well that came in after, that became really popular after uh, after that Hibana change with the mm -hmm. um, two, four and uh, six pellets, right? So yeah. that's a really strong one as well for either team depending on what you're used to if you're playing if you're used to playing without a bana and then obviously because it's gonna be so hard to open up these hatches the Kate ban comes in just to make sure that you know it's a bit balanced and there is actually ways to attack onto church here and it's not like completely one-sided and just impossible to attack right mm -hmm. mirror is also a good man uh, a lot of yeah, different, yeah. different uh, mirrors you put down for a lot of different angles there's a lot of walls you can break through in this map a lot of control you can have over uh like upstairs, uh, in the I don't know what rooms they are. The uh, the weightlifting room is the fire. A lot of different uh, walls you can have up there. You can put your window on. 
all in the basement as well, a lot of different windows. So it's always a good band to have a mirror. If you want to yeah, definitely. Yeah, defending. Right, I mean, mirror is just one of those operate one of the one of those operators that are just viable everywhere kind of almost mm. maybe besides cons consular right so it's just a really good ban overall i mean it's again it's a comfort ban just like the thatcher you just don't want to play against it necessarily and you don't want to really play it right because you're not used to playing it either so it's just like one of those uh i mean we have an extra ban here what are we gonna ban we're probably gonna ban mirror right yeah i mean you ban anyone else you're probably not gonna get a good enough result so you might as well ban the mirror get that out of the way Less angle to check. Uh, seconds remaining. Less, well, of course, you still need a drone and stuff like that, but of course, there's going to be less droning for specific Attack angles and what angles you have to take. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, enough about that, though, because the game started and the first round is already begun. And Noetic is going to start on defense here, as I said before, and they're going to head straight into CCTV here. So it, it looks like the attackers are just going to go for a bit of a courage take here. Uh, Thermite Breach already on the bottom garage wall as Jaeger is going to get a little bit aggressive. Skies is going to peek into the bottom garage door. That's not open yet and the attackers might actually pay a lot for it, but it won't happen uh, right now as Jaeger is just going to back off and back towards the side. He's going to try to maybe tank Zofia there a little bit, but it doesn't seem like anything is going to pan out. Located by attackers. Now climbing up on the wall outside, looking to see if we get any different angles. Perhaps the Thatcher up on the wall maybe? One kill over in the... On the Wedex side. They got. Go for another peek. Another one peeking through the garage door. Oof, what a shot from Crack there. Making it a 5v3 for his team. It looks like Noetic is just all over the board right now. As F2 is just gonna answer back and Sky's gonna trade right back. Onto the onto the Zofia, I believe. And Goody, he's gonna make it a 3v2 right now. And we're already half on time. I mean, not not much time has passed and already so much action had happened in this round. This guy's gonna just go on to hold into onto garage here, but as I say that the double kill from Goody here is gonna take Skies off the catwalk and he's gonna push onto the side. It doesn't look like he's planning on any plant here. And it looks like he's aware that there's a player on cash and crack. Another great shot here onto the thermite is gonna take him down and F2 he's gonna he's gonna play this 1v2 situation. Alright, sledge versus a I can't remember the name of the person's name. But, uh, and we've got Panda as well. Okay, well, then it's Rando for me. Keto! Yeah, great shot there from Keto. is gonna close out that round. And wow, I, I didn't even that's, see that's that. That's angle, yeah. You can barely see I didn't even see that sledge. Straight Definitely. Off. Yeah, he just closed that round for his team. And I mean, it looked pretty comfortable for Noetic. It didn't look like they. Uh, they had to sweat too much for that one, right? No, definitely uh, not. Kiwiji just kind of lost their footing there in the beginning of the round, and then uh, Goody, he did the most that he could, right? He just kind of went for a little bit of a desperate play there. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely catching Skies off guard on the catwalk there. It looks like no one was watching the breach there, which, I mean, sometimes it's just a mistake that you're going to pay for, but not for Noetic, not this time around, as uh, they're going to be able to claw their, back, their way kind of back into it, as Goody was kind of alone on site and Defenders they were able to kind of re like trade Jaeger off the catwalk and make it a 2v1 and then just um, Keto closing out that round out of that off that nasty angle there onto F2, right? Yeah, I mean, there, was a there was a chance uh, when it came with a 2v2. It was a 3v2 and then someone lost their life in the in garage, but as soon as it came with 2v2, it looked a lot rougher. Uh, but going in for that, uh, going in for the kill on the third man, the guy, uh, the guy, unfortunately, lost his life, and it became instantly became a two v one, a much harder situation than expected. Ten seconds left. And now we're into round two. And Five yeah, basement, two basement. Yeah, they're gonna head straight into church right now, and I'm expecting church to actually be a bit stronger for them than the CCTV just because of the bands. Uh, I know Kate is banned, but you know it's still really difficult to open these hatches with a, with a Maverick. Uh, alone, we don't have that Ibana open when it's not that quick and easy, you know, just uh, send your Kairos and just kind of detonate it and it just goes off. You know, it, it's just not as easy. So you have to put a Thermite charge on it. That means that you can't open the church wall. It just makes church a little bit more difficult. And it looks like Maverick is going to do some work here onto Tunnel here as a Nako here. He's going to look for that Maverick set, but he's going to back off. Smart man, he's going to get a drone for that. And uh, I need to play that on his back. 
So he peaked, if, he, if he peaked quickly, then he was unfortunately going to die, but not quick enough, unfortunately. Peaks the angle a bit too slow. Yeah, I mean, he, he got away with a drone there, which is good mm. enough, in my opinion, and he backed off, so he's going to basically live to fight another day in the tunnel where, you know, smoke is just so potent, potent and important as, a, as an operator. Uh, you have those three smoke babes, and if he if he's able to just smoke out from the box area or the AK area towards the tunnel, he's gonna be able to delay the attackers for so long. Yeah. Now we're looking at a push from basement going upwards. Let's go find some hatches to patch, uh, patch through. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Crank here on the mute is just gonna kind of maybe look look forward towards the pick here from Adam here towards uh, the lounge area, but it doesn't look like he's gonna find anything. As Clutcher, yep. he's gonna help the smoke hold tunnel here. Uh, it looks like there is a pressure on the defense here from the kitchen hatch, but Kenki, he's he's aware that there's a defenders there looking straight at him. He's, I don't think he's gonna peek too wide on this. Uh, Thermite and Maverick, they're basically gonna look for, maybe for a pick here, they're gonna look for some pressure here from the kitchen hatch. Uh, as I say that, Thermite is gonna rotate back uh, the kitchen pressure definitely needs to come in as Kito is going to take Thermite off uh, from above actually and he's going to make the vertical angle towards the hatch. He's going to take another one off and Clatcher is going to get another pick. Kex is going to trade for two and Kito is going to get another one. 3v1 for Noetic right now is Kex. He's in motor right now. He knows there's the, there's the defender in blue and he's just going to look for that swift pick with the shots but he's not going to hit anything. There's a player on the main series here. Kito, he's gonna he's gonna swing wide and he's gonna get the headshot onto Kex here, closing out another round for Noetic. Very rough round for Noet uh, for Noetic uh, for uh, QVG. All the angles were against them. One kill from above. Very hard to try and uh, trying to attack into uh, basement sites, uh, especially yeah. uh, with the chance they've been given. Hibana out. They need to use a Thatcher instead. Not Thatcher. And I said Thatcher. Thermite. The thermite. Yeah. Thermite. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, what happened there, right? Like, um, QVG kind of had the idea of what they wanted to do. Like, they wanted to go mm -hmm. for, like, tunnel, kitchen control. They wanted to pressure mainsters a little bit with the Zofia. I don't know if you noticed. I mean, in general, it's a pretty good attack that used to work quite well. Uh, the only thing is that it didn't look like they cleared the top floor. Or if they did, it looked like they maybe misdroned Kito. Because Kito was basically playing in Logic the entire time. And when Thermite got to it, like to the rotate from tunnel onto kitchen, Kito was able to catch Thermite on the rotate from the main stairs window, I believe. And he got the pick on the Thermite as he was rotating back to kitchen, giving them, uh, giving Noetic the opening frag, basically. And Thermite was supposed to be that, you know, that help, that that cover to help the Maverick push into tunnel there from the kitchen hatch. And then as Kito realized that, oh, I got the entry here, and there's probably another player in kitchen, and the push is probably coming in here, because he probably realizes that the Maverick is stuck in tunnel. He basically, he, he, he made a really smart play with a C4. He opened the bar vertically, a vertical angle uh, with a C4, so using his C4 really well there, and getting another pick onto the kitchen player there. I believe it was Sledge, I'm not entirely sure. But regardless, he got another pick onto the kitchen player, and what, that was, that's basically the play that closed the round for me personally, because once uh, Kito is kind of closing down the entire kitchen hatch area, and he's kind of holding on to logic that late in the round, I don't know how you kind of retake and uh, kind of make it work, you know, because you have to push him to the side and basically trade on 180 angles, so many defenders, uh, without dropping the kitchen hatch, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I mean, even, even if you wanted to go from a different part of the site, you've got no hard breach, you've got no soft breach, you got, you're not going to go anywhere. You shouldn't be stuck in the uh, in the current position you're at. Oh, I have to push from angles and a lot of harsh angles in the basement, especially when two are watching the same, uh, two watching the tunnel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, enough about that. We're already two minutes into the next round, right? Uh, Noetic is going to head into gym here, which is, I mean, this is the third viable site on this map. So obviously they're going to go there and not bar. I mean, what teams play bar nowadays? And Crack is going to get the first frag. And Sir Quicky, he's going to get a double here. And he's going to actually put his team in a 3v4, make it a 3v3 as Skies is going to answer back with Jaeger's gun. And another pick on the bridge yeah, from Kito. What a shot, Kito! An amazing double kill in Skies. He's going to close out the round for his team. What an amazing play on the breach there. Wow. I Two did not expect that kills. one. I don't, I don't think anyone expected that. I think watching that angle, coming, sweeping in, one head shot, peeks again, waits for the person to peak on the right, another one right on the head. Wow. Very, I mean, Kito, very you're... Play.
Kito is not allowed to just speak onto the main bridge there. This is not a ranked <laughs> game. You can't just do that. Swing into CCTV, standing in the middle of, in front of the bridge, basically. There's two attackers staring at you, and you somehow kill both with. I mean, I mean, his shot just landed perfectly on their heads there, but still, I'm not too sure what QVG is doing there. You know, it like... Just the, it just goes to show. Noetic aren't messing around when it comes to this series. They are looking to finish this. They're looking to get in those points. And at the moment, QVG don't look like they're having a fun time. Defender, but... <sighs> bombs from being defused by I mean, I'm some would even change. call it QVG. It can definitely change, but until now, at least from that single round on the breach, the way Keto got, got those... Don't get me wrong, yeah? It, those were amazing shots. But QVG at this point, they just look like paid actors, if you ask me. <laughs> look like they're just sort of paid to fall over or not. But... Definitely, definitely. Oh, no. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, accusing anyone of match fixing, obviously. <laughs> but, I mean, QVG just gotta do a little bit better than that. Exactly. Let me see if they're gonna do the better in round four, coming up to attack spawn in five, five seconds. Left. Yeah, and looks like we're gonna go back to CCTV here that Noetic actually, uh, I wouldn't say won it dominantly. I think it was actually the closest round from the from the three bomb side rotation here, right? Uh, QVG had a pretty close round, but it was only because Woody basically ran into the side, kind of surprised the defenders, got a double there. I mean, I don't think it was really a viable strategy to just kind of work out. I think just Woody just did, uh, you know, he did a lot for, for his team that uh, round. And I think what QVG is looking towards right now, they're looking for their entries to just kind of do a little bit more. Maybe F2 with those nades. Uh, maybe try to nade out the catwalk player. I'm looking uh, forward to that. Kaneki as well. He has nades as well. Uh, I mean, Sir, Sir Goog... Yana. We're just going to stick to Yana. Googie. Sir Googie. <laughs> yeah, Sir, Sir Googie. Googie, I mean, I, I believe he also has nades, but regardless, I mean, it, it looks like he's the entry for his team right now. And yep. th those entries, that sledge and that Yana just need to do... And Kex, they just have to do a bit more work here for uh, for QVG. As yeah, uh, as I speak about that, I mean, Googie, he's going to get... He, he's gonna trade here on the C4 here. Clutcher, he, he's gonna go for a really aggressive C4 on the breach that worked out. In my opinion, that's a worth trade. You're taking out uh, the Maverick with the nades, I believe, although I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, Nitro Star, yeah. Nitro Star came straight out, killed the, uh, yeah, uh, killed the Maverick that uh, put in the line. And so then that's one of the one of the harbitrers right there, and Goody. I mean, he's your he's your second harbitrer, and I mean, maybe he's on the ace, but it's still not ideal, right? As Kex is gonna get another frag here onto the smoke. Uh, great map awareness from here, as Kito, he's just gonna hold this construction area as he's feeling the push coming in there. Taking a look around. I'll slow pace, seeing what the angle can push, seeing how they can breach in. Bomb has been yeah, Kito's gonna get another one off, but it looks like we're generally kind of slow down here a little bit as the defenders are kind of expecting a push here from both sides, maybe the construction side and the main bridge at the same time. F2 is just gonna hold this angle towards the island area right there, and Googie, he's just gonna rotate towards the main bridge. I think it's smart play from him as Kex, he's gonna get another one onto the Jaeger, and he's actually gonna make it a 3v2 for his team. Googie, he's gonna sneak up on the bridge here, and Valkyrie doesn't know! He's gonna get the frag onto Kito, 3v1, 40 attackers, 40 seconds, and I think they're looking forward towards the execute here. There is a defender on Catwalk, they know where he is now, and it's all up to the attackers right now. They need to make the correct play here. Do not allow Crack to clutch it out, as we know that he's capable of from his previous round. Uh, Googie, he's gonna pressure him from the garage here, and Sledge, he's gonna put the plant down in construction. Looks like we're gonna go for a really aggressive post plant here. Crack, he's gonna push onto the catch stairs, and he's gonna take Sledge off as he was slacking on the drone. What are you doing, F2? Oh no, Crack, he's gonna get another one on the server window, he's gonna make it a 1v1, as it's all up to Googie, but it looks like Googie is gonna be able to close it out, and Crack is gonna go down, I mean, what a nice try by Crack, they're definitely cracked, as the kids say, now nowadays, and I'm not that old, I'm only 23, but that's what the kids say, I don't use that slang, I mean, a nice try from him, a nice try from him, but Googie, I was talking about the man before the round started, and he was actually able to deliver, right? Mm -hmm. I said those entries need to do a little bit more. I mean, he got uh, he got the first trade in the beginning of the round onto that mute. That was a really good start for them. I mean, that's that's a start because 
it didn't go for them that way in the previous rounds. And look, they made it work this time around. I'm not too sure if it was because that, of that specific kill. But I mean, it was a, it was a rough post plant here. I Crack definitely showed the them uh, that he's a player to be feared, yep. right? Uh, that they need to play these post plans a bit more careful. F2, watch out with these drones. Watch out where you're droning. Uh, so that doesn't happen again. But at the end of the day, Gookie, he's gonna close it out for his team. And look, look I mean, he, he's gonna. Look at, look at the competitive first round. They, 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 look, Walsh were organized. They're pushing in with so much bat. They, they, uh, the entry frags really good on the attacking side. QVG looking really good on the, on the first few frags of the round. And we looked at the uh, the comparison of uh, map control as well. They, they totally ignored the garage. They didn't need to push through the garage, but as soon as we got onto that balcony, they were getting frag after frag, pushing onto the site, and tricking control of the site when it was a 3v2. Yeah. The bomb. Definitely. We've seen a way more organized QVG there. Uh, a little bit better communication than in previous rounds. Better trades, you know, a little bit more teamwork. It was a rough round towards the end, of, towards the end. But I mean, all, all in all, that's what I'm expecting to see here. I want more rounds like this, closer rounds here. I don't want to see no edit all over you here. Uh, try to see how you slow down the pace. You make sure you breach these walls and how you pressure the defenders properly, right? Push those places that maybe they necessarily don't expect always, just like Gugi did there on the main bridge, you know, catch, catching that Valkyrie off guard there. And as I say that, Maverick here is gonna work on that same main bridge here, and he's gonna make sure that's open for his team, um, you know, to go for another execute here. I'm not too sure if they're gonna go for construction side here again. It looks like they actually are, uh, with F2 going towards Logic here, or maybe they're gonna actually, actually also pressure Garage. But I mean, regardless of what push you're going for, try to be a little bit unpredictable and also slow down your pace. Make sure you're trading. Exactly, make sure you're trading. 5v4. Oh, oh trade Vito. three. Count the frag. Now 4v4. Yeah, Kaneki needs to watch out in that breach, you know. He, he, he's dying so often. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it's QVG just not covering as well. But I mean, the fact is that at the end of the day, the breach is not even open yet. Uh, Kito, he, he's just putting his team on his back right now, getting so many opening kills and closing out so many rounds, and he's gonna get another frag here. It's really important he's gonna take take out that Maverick. I mean, they did trade the smoke here, not exactly a trade, but I mean, smoke did go down here uh, as the Maverick went down, and I, I don't know who this favors more, because from on one hand, you don't have the smoke, but also on the other hand, you can't breach anything now as there's those mute jammers that are gonna deny the wall and as i say that f2 he's gonna try to get rid of that mute jammer i'm not too sure if he's gonna be successful and it sounds like he is as the a shard is gonna open that wall clutcher he's gonna he's gonna challenge a little bit on the main breach here and he's gonna get shot down by goody here what Three. nice awareness from him yeah he's gonna put his team in a 3v4 here and definitely a winnable round for qbg here yet again as we're gonna get closer here towards execute 40 seconds on the board, F2 is gonna look towards the top cache area here, as they have nades to work with here. I'm pretty sure that F2 has still another nade, nade in his pocket here that he didn't use yet. Um, and it looks like three attackers are just gonna push slowly from construction side. Sky's gonna get one. He's gonna take Zopia down. He's gonna get another one. Sky's in a crack. They're lighting up the scoreboard blue. They're gonna make it a 3v1. Sir Gugi's gonna make, bring it back for his team, but crack, he's gonna close it. He's gonna close well, it out again for his wazoo. team. Right there. One top wow. shot the Wazoo. Even through a wall, knew exactly where he's going to peek. Straight onto the head. No, not much I'll say there. It's just a matter of who's better at fragging. It was all in the space of five seconds, which three of them died. So, very, very uh, tight round towards the end. Slow build I mean, up into an explosive finish. It, it really looked like QVG had something going there for them. They, it looked like they really knew what the, what what they what they were doing right what they were going for but i mean then sky is just out of nowhere right just double kill just like that i mean you're dead mm -hmm. on the construction wall and then another one dead on the construction door and i mean what do you actually do about that i mean i, I could argue that there's an aid in your pocket maybe you use that but i mean maybe you didn't know where he where he is i'm not too sure what happened there but i don't know sky is just closing it out for his team with a double kill um just kind of making a statement for me uh, just kind of yep. showing that Noetic is just a little bit more dominant here. Actually, way more dominant here, at least on the defense side on Clubhouse. And, I mean, this is the last round, so 
So we're gonna see what QVG does this time around. We're gonna head back into church. Uh, that was a side that was pretty hard to defend for uh, for Noetic. I think it was. A, I wouldn't say it was hard actually. Oh, uh, it wasn't. But I think it was. Uh, brutal start. Very brutal start to the round when they did this previously. But it wasn't. It wasn't actually a start to the round. I think it was more towards the yeah, end the middle, when middle uh, end, yeah. when 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 Malusi with that C4 kind of made that play in logic. But I think if yeah. UVG is gonna learn from that, right? If they're gonna clear clear out the top floor here and they're gonna go for the same kind of push, maybe maybe they could make it work. I I just don't know mm -hmm. if if they're gonna correct their mistakes here. So so I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna watch and see, right? Can't tell, but we might have one pushing in through uh, tunnels again. Uh, probably thermite. I don't believe it. from upstairs, in fact. Much different uh, approach than the last time. Looking forward to go through upstairs and go downwards. Clear sweep. Yeah, they definitely remember that what Keto, Keto did to them last time around, and they're gonna try and clear him out this time around. As Kex, he's gonna push here. Uh, your entry pushing into garage, that's what you expect here. Really well played by QVG. Looks like they're gonna go for a coordinated top floor push. Two minutes on the board here. And I think they're moving at a pretty uh, good pace here. But Sky is just gonna take Kex off just like that. As Kex was, was so focused on the Malusi, but not even thinking that maybe she has some cover. Another player to back her up there. And Sky is again a uh, phenomenal play for his team there. Yeah, not watching those angles. You if you're gonna push pushing through, you can see an open wall. You need to watch Cookie. the open wall. Was that a wall bang? I Maybe. I don't Not think he had out. a I don't think he had an angle there and I mean well played regardless as Kito he's gonna stay alone I, I just said he he's gonna stay alone on the top floor but he's gonna take Maverick's head off just like that Not the fadeaway shot to to as he's running away I mean what is that Kito he's just all over the map right now running around on that Malusi just doing whatever he wants and the smoke player, he's gonna take another one with him. His first frag on the board here. I mean, you're not expecting much from the smoke here, especially when the Malusi is carrying you this hard. But I mean, definitely doesn't hurt to put your team in a 4v2, right? Exactly. Now looking for uh, three pushing from the basement. Frag right in. A little bit, a little bit aggressive here. He's gonna toy with Adiana. He's gonna dodge two nades there. I mean, I don't know if you wanna do that, Googie. He's gonna take Crack's head off. And he's gonna push here towards the smoke. I'm pretty sure he saw him. He knows that there's defenders over an army. And looks like Googie and and uh, Googie and Goody, they're just gonna go for a bit of a split push here. But Googie, he's gonna take Nako off the board here. As again, smoke here. Just you're just throwing there a little bit too much. And Clutcher, he's gonna take two. Clutcher what? with a 2k, Googie with a 3k. Looking like a loss of defense, loss of. Uh... I, I don't mean, know what Clutcher, the one was then. Maybe a bit too aggressive. Maybe. A bit too aggressive for the, on the defense side. Losing two yeah. people while they were pushing out. Definitely, but I mean, it, it, does, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, right? Because you have Clutcher on your team just kind of making it up. It, it doesn't matter, just kind of living up to his name. Just making sure that he's closing out those rounds. Even if my smoke over peaks kind of towing a little bit too much with the enemy here. I'm still here with that LMG. It just, just goes brrr. Right? It just gets that double in motor and in blue, just closing out that round wonderfully. Well, it was a very wonderful finish. Quick 2k. Yeah. Very clean. And Attackers just goes to the show. And bomb. If you're gonna if you're gonna, if you're gonna go aggressive, you need to know exactly where to go. Oh exactly well maybe not where to go, but exactly what you're gonna do. And it just seemed towards the end they'd Gained all this confidence, but over, very overconfident at the same time. Looking going from uh, 4v2 to 2v2. So it's just one strike uh, one strike of confidence straight into the next. And it, straight from uh, danger to potential winning the round. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, definitely. Noetic definitely with a really confident one-sided defense there. 5 to 1 score. I mean, usually when you see scores like those, you just you just don't expect a comeback. But I mean, it's siege; anything can happen, right? Uh, QVG has dropped sides here, and I mean, Clubhouse is one of those maps that it's a little bit defender-sided. You can expect from the defense here a little bit more than you can expect from the attack. I'm not saying it's really defender-sided, but uh, QVG is definitely. Um, hopefully, they're gonna change their pace here a little bit. Also, that swap uh, swapping the side is not only about. 
uh, kind of what the thinner, what side is the thinner side of door and what is not, and it's also a little bit about the momentum, right? Exactly. Now, what look at I hear is a uh, Maverick electrocuting himself on a wall. Now, very good play to open the wall up, but very dangerous play at the same time. You're losing a bit of health there. Every bit of health matters in some, uh, in a lot of occasions. But a very clever play from the Maverick, upside down, breaking up that wall so his uh, fellow attackers can actually see through. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, at the same time, while we breach that wall with that Maverick, it looks like Crack and Skies are just gonna put some pressure here towards bedroom. As uh, Clutcher, he he's gonna push if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so the attacker is actually gonna have bedroom control here. As Maverick is gonna actually open up the main breach. So it looks like we're gonna go for a little bit of a split push here. The defenders are definitely gonna feel that pressure, and Buck is just gonna fully open that log logistic wall. You know, it's just so important to hold on to these really uh, aggressive angles here. Uh, towards the defense side here, towards the island, everything and the kicks. He's gonna take down Nako with an aggressive peek from the kitchen hallway. Gonna make it a 4v5 for his team. Finally, QVG with the opening frag here. This guy's gonna answer back. He's gonna take F2 with the nade. Wonderful, wonderful play from him. And looks like Flesh is just gonna go in here, possibly to burn the ADS. I'm not too sure what they want to do here, but I definitely want to bridge that construction wall. Uh, as they know that there's defenders roaming down below and they want to put some pressure here onto the side and maybe think about execute soon. Ooh, Keto, another beautiful headshot. As you take down Kumi and Skies, he's going to get one on the breach and Kex is going to answer back onto Keto here on the server window. But I mean, the attackers are sitting pretty here, right? 3v2 situation. 40 seconds, they're going in. Plant is going to go down. Sir Googie, he's going to say no. He's going to take the head off of Skies. And Thermite, he's gonna stop his plant. He's gonna try to get maybe a pick here first before he goes for his plant. He knows he cannot plant in his 2v2 situation. Kex and Googie. They're gonna be stuck here on the top cache area. 20 seconds on the board and all the pressure is on Clutcher and Crank. I'm not too sure if it's, they're gonna be able to get the frag onto Kexer and it looks like they won't be able to. And Googie and Kex are gonna clutch it out for their team. They're gonna make, I think that was the play of the game for them. Through the wall, they, through the wall. They didn't know exactly they really, they didn't know where they were shooting. They really brought it back, made sure that they got that pick onto Keto there uh, on the main breach and really made it work for their team. And I mean, that's what I meant when I said you kind of shift your momentum a little bit when you swap sides, right? When you go yeah. from attack to defense, maybe it gives you a little bit more confidence. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, that's that slight advantage when you get to choose your gunfights when you're defending maybe maybe that's what makes the difference here i'm not too sure but but i'm definitely i'm definitely hope, hoping for a little bit of a comeback here for qvg maybe um, it's, definitely, it's definitely starting to look like it it's gone from uh, noetic saying well we're not meant to be we're, uh, we're not going to be messed with while Attack qvg just turned around and going well we don't care who you are we don't care how good you are we're going to Fight, give it all we got, and it's looking like it's a five. It's a five-two right now, which isn't bad considering the uh, statistics of this game. And Definitely. That last it, it, minute, it, it, that last minute was crucial to the uh, crucial to uh, the defending side. With all the, the and I mean, if you look at the scoreboard here, it, it doesn't look too different here, right? I mean, you have Googie here on one side and Kex kind of carrying their teams, kind of really putting the frags up for their team. And I mean, on the other side, you have kind of Keto and Skies doing the same uh, on 10 and 9 frags here. And Googie is on 11 and Kex is on 8. So, I mean, both of your carries on both teams are kind of performing. So you can definitely expect QVG to just kind of bring, try to bring it back for their team. And I mean, right now, we're just gonna, it's going to be up to Noetic and how they adapt, right? Mm hmm. Uh, see, is it, is it basement site? I didn't actually probably see. It is basement site, right? Both yeah, we're going to attack here towards basement here. Right. And and I mean, that, that's that's a little bit of a more more of a dominant one, uh, usually for most defenders, for most teams. Yep, and Kex, as I say that, he's going to get the opening frag here on th onto the Jacuzzi player here. That's Keto, one of your primary fraggers there. I mean, he's playing Maverick, but he's is fragging out of his mind and i mean you're gonna take him down first that's a really big frag for your team right yeah i mean it's looking like a trend here that the maverick is dying the first maybe maybe we're ongoing trend in this game because we've not seen a maverick have a lot of action we've seen
seen him breach a site and then he dies. He's not. I mean, maybe on the uh, maybe it's even different for Noetic, but at the moment it's looking completely the same. Yeah, definitely. Maverick is just one of those operators. Just kind of needs a lot of support when he needs yeah. to do his job. Um, you know, you just kind of have to cover him because there's no way you're expecting a Maverick to kind of defend himself and kind of hold on for himself when he's using that torch. But I mean, as I say, that F2, he's going to take Naku down and he's going to make it a 5v3 for his team. That's that's your Zofia off the board here. And Skyz is going to try to maybe push onto tunnel here and maybe just kind of bring it back for his team. But it doesn't look too likely as he's facing against Kaneki here with those three gas canisters who's definitely ready to delay it for as much as possible. Kex, he's on a little bit of a roam here. Um, he's gonna look for for some picks on bar area. Is Crack and Skies, they're gonna use their flash and, oh, no nades here on Skies' side. As Gas Canister is gonna go out and definitely gonna delay those two attackers. Uh, it really looks like it's up to Kex right now to just kind of make a play for his team and maybe um, alleviate a little bit of pressure from the defenders here as the last babe is going to go out here, and the attackers are definitely going to get ready to push after that one. Ooh, Kex here with a sneaky defenders. angle. Uh, but he's looking at the wrong thing. He didn't see the sledge going down there. Or was it was it Buck? He didn't see the Buck going down on the main stairs. But F2, it doesn't matter. He's going to take the Buck heads off with the SMG-11 recoil there. And Kaneki, he's going to down the Yana. They got, he's gonna kill. shut down the entire tunnel right now because Clutcher, he's not in tunnel anymore. And he and Gugu, a clean sweep. Gugu, Nearly Gugu, perfect round. Gugu, Mr. Jaeger, he, he's gonna take the kitchen player off the board here and he's gonna put another one for his team on the board here. QVG is definitely it's definitely looking like a little bit of a comeback. Definitely. I mean, considering who they're against, clean sweep, nearly perfect round. Only two of them got shot in the end of that in the end of that round. That's looking scary for Noetic right now. It's gone from confidence that's almost inspiring fear right now from uh, QVG. It's a scary game at the moment. Definitely. I'll tell you why it's getting scary, in my personal opinion. Not only because QVG just put two rounds here uh, on the board in a row. It's not only that, but it's also the players that haven't played before. They're kind of waking up a little bit, you know? Um, yeah. Defender it's uh, bomb, it's Kaneki, you know, just kind of bringing in the first frag on the board here. F2 kind of waking up a little bit. Goody getting that uh, that important frag on the bottom of the main stairs on the on, on back there, right? Just kind of, or sorry, it was F2. But I mean, still, these players that, that, that kind of haven't played, we haven't like felt them a little bit uh, in the attacking rounds. They're kind of waking up now, and they're definitely impacting the rounds way more. Kaneki maybe just got one frag uh, on the board last last round, but I mean, uh, the amount of pressure that he alleviated from himself and his team in the tunnel area there, with those babes kind of playing it safe, but playing it aggressive uh, in a really balanced way, making sure that the attackers are wary, they're not pushing, uh, kind of making them back off a little bit, maybe rotate around the map, and then yeah. getting that important frag towards the end of the round when, when the Zofia or the Yana actually decided to push, I think that's what's getting scary. For, yeah, uh, it's, it's just, just goes to show how much uh, how much power Smoke has in a game. It's when the Smoke's left alive. We've seen in the first half when Smoke was a uh, when Smoke was on defense, we see him get taken out in the first uh, first minute of the round. But as soon as we see him actually in action and being safe, the amount of control he has over pushes and over the map, it's just immense. I mean, we saw that then straight from. Uh, Straight from the get-go, he was peeking, he was keeping that angle, got one frag into a smoke grenade, which means they can't even push through to refrag. It's just amazing how much smoke can do in a game. Yeah, I mean, definitely, and you, you, got, you got to wonder what's going to happen this time around when there's no smoke player, but Goody, he's going to tell me exactly what's going to happen. Is He's going to get the opening frag with the C4 here from the bathroom area. Onto the Maverick out of all players. Again, the Maverick being the opening kill. It definitely looks like a trend so far. Looking good for... Oh, okay. Not looking good anymore. Looking pretty even right now. Yeah, Clutcher, <laughs> he's gonna take uh, Goody off the board here on bathroom. Looks like he overpicked a little bit, but Kex, he's still holding on to the top main stairs area here. Has enough control for his team to kind of hold the side still. But Skies, he's gonna answer back and gonna gonna take uh, Googie, the your mute player off the board here another potential 
before and Nako, he's gonna jump in, he's gonna spray the mattress, but it doesn't look like any shots are gonna land. Never mind that, he's gonna take Kaneki off the board next to the mattress through the wall here. And Nako, he's gonna text, he's gonna answer back and Sky's gonna get a double and gonna close it out for his team. Wow, that was a really swift one. For no Eric, he just jumped in these windows and just kind of close it out. Uh, they didn't really care about the breach anymore. They didn't really care about communication, just kind of playing it proper. They just said, all right, uh, kind of, let's just mess them around, you know, jump in these windows and just kind of kind of destroy them. I mean, that's where you're kind of missing the frost a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's why it's, it's be it became so popular on that side specifically, because you can deny that jump in uh, on the on the gym area or in the bedroom area doesn't really matter, but it's really unexpected when you're not kind of not, not watching the windows really and you're not expecting it and just an attacker just jumps in and uh, just lands his shot in shots you know so it's it's yeah. really important it's a really important operator in that specific side and maybe if they had it on the board there maybe that round would have looked differently but I mean it doesn't matter because it didn't happen and Noetic just put themselves on match point here. Now seem to have re uh, regained their footing after the first two rounds on defense, on attack rather. So they've now gone from 5-3 to 6-3. Looking good. It's, it's looking good for both teams at the moment. They're both looking quite scary in their own uh, in their own ways. But it's actually there's no way you can tell what's going on, uh, what's going to happen in this map. It's very very unpredictable at this point. Definitely, but QVG is definitely gonna feel the pressure, right? That, oh, if we lose another round, we're gonna lose the entire map, right? And a 7-3 is a pretty dominant score, so I'm sure they don't want to do that. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm expecting QVG to maybe uh, just kind of come into their own here, or just completely crumble, right? Because when you just kind of push the beast into into the corner, right? Uh, she's gonna, It's gonna show its true colors. And we're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna see what QVG's real colors are in this in this round because this round is basically gonna well we're we're gonna see if they're gonna actually lose this map or if if they actually have a chance of coming coming back here and as I say that no they're just gonna go for a little bit of a it looks like we actually went back to gym that's a curious one I didn't even notice that one as I was speaking and I mean last time around it was a pretty dominant one for for QVG and as I said that. Uh, for for Noetic, and as I said at Kex, he's gonna shot me up and he's gonna get an opening frag with a pistol here onto Kido here. Uh, it looks like Kido is the constant opening pick here on every single round when Noetic is attacking. Um, it's just repeating. I mean, it's just repeating the uh, the curse. Maverick's dead again. You have to use Thatcher instead. Not Thatcher. Thermite. I keep saying Thatcher. You have to use Thermite instead uh, to breach in. So I just yeah, yeah. Puts, that, puts that fresh on the map. Definitely, and I'm not too sure we can blame the Maverick players here. And I no, mean, it's, just, it's exactly the positioning, and you have to be positioned that way, of course. You can't be positioned yeah, the other way. It's just your job, and then it's up to your team to kind of support you and just kind of alleviate the pressure a little bit. Wow, Kuki, what a shot that. on the Jacuzzi roll! Great reactions from him, and another shot onto the Zofia jumping in, and he's gonna. Ooh, he's not gonna down the Yana, but he's gonna put on so much damage onto her as the C4 is gonna go out, but it's not gonna land. It doesn't look like the skies. He's on 20 HP and he's gonna try to chase Googie into the main area here, onto the lounge here. And Googie, he's ready for that. He's gonna, ooh, he's gonna lose it. Gunfight actually, Sky is gonna take him off. I mean, 2v4 here doesn't look too spicy for Noetic, regardless of that frag onto Googie. And you're getting those uh, two frags right at the start of the map. Right the and Kex is gonna answer back in two beautiful shots there. Onto Crack Lovely and defense. Sky's Lovely headshot on Diana. Uh, I mean... Successive. They, they've got their headphones on the right way. They can hear them coming. Doesn't matter where you are. Having that angle. Having that power behind you. Getting that first kill. Getting that second kill. Wrap up the nine uh, round right, uh, quite nicely. Definitely. And I mean, as I said, QVG just lost the round last time around. Really uh, in a one-sided fashion, right? Noetic was so dominant last time around. They just answered right back. And basically that opening kill with a pistol onto Kido. Uh, and putting so much damage onto the Thermite in the beginning of the round, I mean, just showed so much. And it looked like maybe, maybe that they're that kind of beast. That they're that kind of beast that is kind of you know waking up when it's uh, when it's backed off towards the corner. And maybe they're gonna wake up here a little bit, and maybe even gonna bring it back to overtime. I'm not too sure. Is it gonna head back into church here that they want 
really dominantly. Noetic really struggled on this one. So I'm really curious about this one. I really want to see what's going to happen here. It just looks like we're going to pause. Response. Yeah, yeah. Oh, never mind. It was. It looked like. It looks like it's just the yeah, Ubisoft servers. Um, Classic just, Ubisoft just, servers. Just, just, <laughs> you all know him. <laughs> just doing. Just doing that usual thing. Uh, and I mean, yeah. Back to back to church defense here. I, I'm expecting. I'm expecting QBG to, you know, to definitely put up a fight here. As last time around, it was a really dominant one for them. I mean, I'm not expecting the same thing, but I'm definitely expecting similar results. Maybe not a clean sweep, but I'm looking I'm looking for some good frags here, some good defense. They've got, uh, they've actually got smoke. The, they've got smoke again. Hopefully they're going to hold the same angle. Uh, but it depends on what the Noetic's doing. It depends what they're pushing. You might have to hold a different angle. And if he does that, then still amazing, uh, amazing defense. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we're gonna see what QVG is gonna come up with here. And it looks like Kex is gonna go for this aggressive roam like they did the previous time around. But I'm not too sure if he has support this time around. So he's gonna hold the top floor here on his own. Never mind, as I said, at Googie, he's gonna challenge here towards the bottom garage area here and he's gonna back off. Looks like he's gonna go uh, onto the top cash area here to kind of help Kex a little bit. And these are uh, both of your fraggers. You're putting a lot on the board here, 14 and 13 for both of them, uh, and just kind of, you know, doing a lot for their team. For, um, so I'm really expecting a lot from their room right now. Kex is, is going to get really aggressive here on the bridge. He's not going to find anything. And Kito, he's actually going to turn the trend around. Then he's going to get the opening frag instead of being the opening frag this time around. So Kito, really open, a really important opening frag from here from him onto the top fragger here on QVG as Googie is going to go down on that Jaeger. So it's up to Kex right now uh, to basically maybe try to bring it back here on the Rome. He kind of has to because it's match point. So we're going to see what he has. Looking to see what, uh, if Kito, took, uh, Kito can pull anything else off of his uh, one bar of health, his 20, 25. Definitely. I mean, Nako, he's just trying to sneak up, sneak up there a little bit on the vigil here, but he, he's not going to find anything as uh, Kex is just going to back off right at, just at the right time. Uh, he, he, he noticed that there, there's probably no way that he's winning that one out. He felt the pressure from multiple angles, multiple drones coming in, and doesn't matter that your vigil, they, they still knew kind of where he's playing at approximately, so he's going to make the smart play here. He's going to back off here towards blue and kind of rely on the rest of his team to maybe try, to, try and bring it back here from this, uh, I would say, dire 4v5 situation as Noetic here has a lot of map control. They yeah, indeed have a lot of map control and they're pushing down the stairs now. Ooh, it doesn't look like Noetic actually noticed that Valkyrie cam and a C4 is going to go out, but it's not going to land. That's a, definitely a missed opportunity there from Goody. And it's possible he's going to regret this one if, if they're not going to win this time. So yeah, F2 is just going to keep on holding here onto the tunnel. And the pressure is going to come here from kitchen side, from the church side, and the main stairs. The defenders they definitely need to kind of try and hold onto the motor here and the main breach here. And Kido, he's going to get another frag. He's going to put his team on his back again. If you can't win without me, guys, then I'm going to step up for you guys. And Skies, Kido and Skies again, putting those frags on the board. Skies is going to go down to F2, 4v2 situation, QVG, really desperate here. Crack and Nako, they're going to close it out. And they're going to make it a 7-4, really dominant scoreline here on the clubhouse they maybe maybe it looked like qvg is kind of coming back a little bit but they just couldn't uh pull through at the end and yeah no eric is just gonna is just gonna re take it pretty dominantly um in my personal opinion 7-4 is not that close That's... although those rounds some of those rounds were pretty close right exactly some of those i mean that last round originally started off rather well uh for the attack side but uh, trades came in, and well, it looked it looked better for the defense side, and then it slowly dropped. It then dropped off again after the two more frags. It looked it looked hopeful, and then looked absolutely abysmal, unfortunately. And unfortunately, that's that's what's going to happen in these type of situations. Yeah, definitely. It looks like we're going to have to a little bit of a break here between those the first map and the second map, and hopefully, we're going to have a. A competitive matchup here in the second map as well. Um, 
But I mean, yeah, it was it was it was a great map to watch. And don't go anywhere. We're gonna we're gonna wait for you right here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna head back into cafe right after. And with that, Sky lands a 4 3 for Rapley. No damage, the shot is through Sky. Oh, he hurts another one down as well. That's gonna be a triple kill for the dude. This character, um, just a small tip don't play Maverick if you can't play him. Ready by no means. He's gonna pick up the second kill of the round, and that's the fuse of down forcing everyone. Is he gonna go for the first? Is he gonna go to the first? Yes, he does! Sorry, they know exactly where he is. Everyone's all fine. Sorry, give him the book. Yeah, let the we change that else. Hell, and we're gonna say thank you, King Chad, for bringing out someone. But Askel, on the other hand, he's gonna steal the show apparently for this one as he will take out Mirko. That's gonna be Ash off the board. Barricade trying to catch some shots down towards that bathroom player, but Ash. Round of full coordination. He'll get injured and taken out, but the reef frag from Askel as he swings through the doorway. Three kills, not a Will it be not a Will it be not a Yes, it will! Kill. Look at this. The shots are going to fly through him. It's still going to work and find Askel. Goes with the ace! The ace. He gets it. Let's go, Askel. He's in it, and that's two. Yeah, track it. Ooh. Oh, it doesn't come out. Oh, I do like the game very close to strength. The shotgun in hand, even. But no, Chrome exposes himself. will get injured now by the smoke, and he's going to claim his guilt at his comrade Sky. Uh, what? Sorry, in the meantime, Brandy going to get injured out. No more with Sand and Neuron. Ready in the waiting, but they have yeah, to push the split. He turns. Oh. What? He gets the ace! Nico, you're insane! Shut them all down, sister. That's a Yurigan shot, and I also hear a bit of the evening sun, and must be so. Kevin on the ash, gonna get into a close engagement, but we've got some level activation, but it's gonna be killed. Positioning, no one is, but look like he still takes some damage, so he quickly shuts down Zoro. He's a legend to a war, but one hiding from the corner. Okay, he's got the corner corner, and he's fighting the bomb. Uh, he cancels the pawn, but then it's going to be Askel swinging up the fight. He wins the one versus one. And takes.
Let your shadows from my soul As these walls begin to fall Head lost in the silence Cold stars illuminate the secrets on your tongue And the poison in my lungs Hello and welcome back to Talent League here uh, in a matchup between QVG and No Eric. Hope you had a lovely game so far and you enjoyed it. Um, 
but I, I'm expecting actually a more interesting one here on Cafe. We know here a little bit about the teams uh, on Cafe and what what they what they're actually capable of bringing in here. So possibly it's gonna be a bit of a closer match, a bit of a closer map here, and possibly not. Uh, this is actually no Eric's map pick here, and it looks like they're the only team here that knows exactly what they're dealing with. Maybe we saw so, uh, we saw it in uh, in uh, UVG's previous game. They lost. Was it seven three against aerial, aerial air resist resistance? So yeah, come on, teams. My bad. But anyway, we saw, uh... we saw in the last match seven three. Uh, so QVG may have a grasp on the map, but we don't know if it's going to be as powerful as Noetic's grasp on the map because, of course, they picked it. They know the they know the spots, know the callouts, know the angles or whatever. Just yeah, looking, definitely. Looking I mean, with Noetic at this point. Yeah, it's it's the first time around for Noetic to play the map uh in this season at the very least mm -hmm. but i mean the kind of the advantage that they they're heading in with is that they pick the map and they did it knowing uh what qvg likes to do on the map the previous time around and qvg actually lost it pretty hard last time around it was a 7-3 yep. uh score line so no kind of should know the weak the the weaknesses here and they should be they should know what they're dealing with here unless uh, qvg changed a lot um and i don't know if they had the time to change a lot on this map here and on the cafe in general you don't you don't change a lot you just stick with you to what you're kind of comfortable with and what you're used to um so noetic is definitely gonna head in with the advantage here but we've seen qvg kind of you know uh, getting off that leash towards the end of clubhouse there especially when they made that switch and they went on on defense there uh and we kind of saw them trying to kind of claw it back a little bit more uh and they definitely put up a fight but noetic regardless they they were able to close it out out of these um you know the very last round it was a really important one for skies and uh uh and keto i believe keto yep. just put a double in the beginning of the round kind of like beginning to end he got the opening kill and then he got another one on to, on on the side there towards the end of the round uh n like right next to the execute so mm -hmm. that was a really important round from him so they were kind of just able to make those impact kills uh at those crucial moments and just kind of making plays that kind of won them rounds but they definitely struggled on the attack way more than on defense because on defense they were dominant uh so it's possible cafe is really defender sided so it's possible that we're gonna see QVG here dominating again on the on the defense side on the defensive side in Cafe, and then it's just gonna come down to who just has a better grasp and better coordination on Cafe, right? Because Cafe, just in my opinion, one of those maps that when you have your um, strats on the attack on point and you're kind of communicating well, you know how you want to take your map control, you would know how you want to use your utility. It's really easy to set up and get rid of the defenders. Uh, for example, let's say on top floor when you're taking the piano area, right, and you have a defender with nades. Yep. Uh, if if you have good communication, good teamwork there to just kind of burn out the utility, ADSs and whatnot on the pixel area, for example, and getting rid of that shield or that, or maybe even killing uh, the defender th like entirely in the beginning of the round, or getting a nade into freezer be right before execute, or utilizing smokes well as we've seen some pro league teams do recently. Um, utilizing some smokes on uh, the long bar area towards the cocktail side, right? Yeah. Uh, it, if if you know how to use your utility well on cafe, I feel like you're really you can really dominate, even though the map is kind of defender sided. But if both teams are gonna be uh, gonna struggle on the attack, they're not gonna be as coordinated. They're gonna not they're not gonna be sure what they want to do. I feel like it's gonna it's gonna go towards the team that is just kind of fragging more in the defense, right? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those maps where it's whoever knows the map better. Because it's it's one of those maps where if one person attacks and one person defends, the strats always mostly stay the same. It's better, There's no variation in the strats necessarily. And there's no variation in uh, the picks really as well. It's all very similar, even through the updates uh, over the years that have gone from the map and the different changes they've done. Uh, it's one of those maps which have mostly stayed the same. Uh, angles have stayed the same. The uh, like I said, the, like I said, the picks are all the same. It's just going to be one of those games where it's whoever frags better, like you said, whoever picks better, maybe like you know, 
maybe you might do an outside pick like you might you might see you know in, in a small chance you know might see a capital because the smokes are good fire is good for area denial but capital isn't always is always one of those uh picks which i you don't see a lot these days Definitely a really dominant operator that can do a lot of damage. But as we say that both teams are ready here. So it looks like we're going to head right into cafe really swiftly here as we're going to head straight into ban phase here. And I mean, what do we expect here, Hades, in your personal opinion and from just the previous game that QVG had on cafe or anything else that you expect? Well, of course, Thatcher's a must. If you're going to ban anyone, ban Thatcher. Amount of impact he has on the game. Either way, either team's gonna ban that here. But uh, from judging from the previous game, you got Valkyrie. Valkyrie is a very good ban, especially on Cafe because the amount of vision she gives. She can chuck. Uh, there's so many nuts and cr uh, crannies that she can just chuck the um, cameras into, uh, which is a lot of information. Even if you don't even have anyone to see on those cameras, it still gives so much information from different angles that they're, that they're pushing. Uh, and of course, like I said, with the outdoor, the outdoor spots, you can see uh, where they're pushing from, and they're very, very sneaky, very, very well hidden on this map, especially. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Valkyrie is a really strong operator to ban out on Cafe, and I mean, QVG already did it in the past, the previous time that they played it, and it looks like Noetic is actually gonna ban out the Maverick here. Um, Maybe they just want to get Kito off onto a more aggressive operator here. They just realize that it was maybe one of their struggles on the on the attack there last time around on the mm -hmm. club. Just kind of not being able to maybe support the Maverick enough. They just decided to just take it off the board completely. I mean, why not? The defenders already banned Thatcher for us, so we're gonna get a the ban that we that we choose, right? Our comfortable uh, operator ban, and. Uh, it looks like they're going to take away the Wamai off the board here as well. Really helpful with the pixel area, with the freezer area over there, just kind of so you can't stack up the huge amount of utility that those ADSs and that those magnets on uh, in front of those shields. So it's just a little bit easier to clear. And then the Mira. Uh, again, it's the same ban. It's the same ban as they had last time. They banned the Mira, and again, Mira's banned again. It's one of those. Uh, one of those uh, characters who can really just get in, uh, get into places, have good, good uh, sight on areas, and then you can really mess up a, a strat with the amount of, uh, amount of support that she has. You know. Yeah, Mira is just like one of those operators. I think that's the closest to wall hacks that we have after Lion got nerfed tremendously, right? Because she sees you, you don't see her, and you're just gonna get pre-fired. And I mean, she doesn't even have to play the Mira window. You can put any attacker there. You can put a Jaeger, uh, any defender there. You can put a Jaeger there. You can put a, a smoke SMG 11, just making sure that you know he's make he has the advantage when he's weak, when he's speaking with a, a little bit of a weaker gun, uh, the SMG 11. So, I mean, you, you see, know, it just kind of gives you flexibility. You, you see a lot of operators behind the mirrors. Like, you never see, I barely ever see a mirror behind the, uh, her little mirror. Attack but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's behind it. It's gonna, it's a frag nonetheless, if you if you have the information. And the amount of information it gives is just un, uh, unbelievable. Definitely. If you're capable of landing your shots, it's definitely a, almost a guaranteed frag most of the time. And it looks like uh, QVG is just going to head in straight into kitchen here. They're going to set up, set up for the site for a little bit of a roam. I'm definitely expecting a little bit of a roam here, especially from the way they played the clubhouse and seeing that vigil, you know, that uh, Melusi with the Banshees. Uh, I'm expecting a little bit of a roam, a little bit of aggression here. Uh, Googie here definitely is going to look towards uh, making these aggressive plays here, possibly with the Jaeger and the Belusi here combined. So we're going to see how Noetic is going to decide to approach this. Maybe they're going to decide to clear them out. Maybe they're just going to decide to ignore them uh, throughout. Uh, I mean, we're going to see. And it looks like a little bit of a spawn peek here onto Nako. It's not going to really uh, end up uh, with a frag, but I mean, Nako. He's gonna end up with 20 HP and he's gonna frag actually right back onto Kexter. Jaeger is gonna go down here really early in the round. It's not that's not what you're looking uh from your defense, right? That you want your defense to kind of be a little bit more dominant here in the beginning of, in the first round. But I mean, it's just the beginning of the round. Maybe it's gonna change, and as I say, that Sky is gonna take another one here on the on the pixel area here. So you're vigil vigilant Jaeger, you're bo both uh roamers are just gonna go off the board here really early in the round, not even two minutes information straight off the board you got like i said like you said two roamers off the map 
Uh, that leaves you, leaves you with just people on site. People don't want to push. Ooh, Goody with an aggressive pick here on the red stairs here. He's gonna take Sophia out right there on the red stairs, and it's gonna put some panic into the attackers' heads. Uh, and F2. That was with, three, three. with that vertical pick, with that shotgun, what a great uh, play from him. Great oh, awareness wow, there okay. with the shotgun, picking that sledge right as he's he making those vertical holes. Maybe overlooking a little bit and not being careful enough, but I mean, regardless, that frag is gonna go towards uh, QVG's side, and they're gonna actually actually equalize your 3v3 now for them. I mean, it's gone away from the stairs now. I wasn't gonna mention the stairs. One of the best places to both attack and defend if you've got an angle. But now, uh, now defense have gone away from the stairs, and now they're looking to go back towards site to watch the uh, the roof uh, where it's been opened up. But. And now it's looking very calm, but you know what's going to be, it's going to be the calm before the storm, you know they're going to be rushing in when it comes to about 40 seconds slash 30 seconds. And they're definitely. all keeping calm. Yeah, Rain definitely. Falling. The match is going to slow down a little bit as Goody, he's going to get a little bit of, uh, little bit of, of shots here towards the, towards Kai's I believe in the garage area here, I think he's just going to, he's just going to tag him a little bit, just 20 HP there, 25 possibly. Uh, but I mean, a lot of pressure here on the on the defenders right now. Is smoke is not aware of cracks, and the C4 is gonna land at the same time. Two v two here, thirty seconds. We're getting really close wow, to execute here. Jack. As one of the attackers already pushed on the freezer here, Goody is gonna get a double kill, double kill here, another kill onto Skies here, and he's gonna look for the next one. He's not gonna find it as Clutcher. He's gonna take Goody's head off. And he's gonna get another one. What a shot, Clutcher! He's gonna take Kaneki as well off the board, right in the kitchen. Such an important frag for his team, and what a beautiful shot. I'm pushing around like that, they're gonna hear you from across the other side of the kitchen. You're just gonna push, peeking from that hole, like from the window. It's just, it's dangerous play, having to be running around all the time. And especially when you know where they are, because you can see you can see it from the other person, the other person will tell you where they are. When you, get, when you have that information, you can't be just rushing through, and not even looking at the angle itself. Very dangerous play, and unfortunately, it didn't pay off. I mean, it's very possible that I, I believe it was Kaneki on the Kade at the end there. Uh, it's very possible that he actually was watching the angle, but I mean, Clutcher was so precise uh, and accurate with his peak, and it almost looked like the, like he pre-fired that angle, right? But he didn't. Mm. He, he just saw his head and just kind of clicked on it and just closed it out for his team. I mean, it was a beautiful shot from him. And if Clutcher is gonna, if your Harwich is gonna keep on landing shots like these. I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be a rough one for you, QVG. Noetic is starting here on the attack on Cafe, and they already took the first round. That's not exactly what you want here. That's not. I mean, you can, however, we have seen that uh, QVG do have it in them to beat Noetic. And of course, compared to the first game, that, lo that first round loss is way, way better than the first round on the previous Five map. So, who knows what's gonna be next? It could be. Uh, could be another win uh, for Noetic, could be a QVG round, but it's all up in the air. We don't fully know. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it looks like QVG is going to head back into the same site and we're going to see a very similar roam here yet again. Uh, maybe not as aggressive as I haven't noticed any spawn picks here. And it looks like all the attackers and the defenders are on full HP here. But Noetic, they're gonna, you know, they're just gonna take, uh, they're gonna pull out a different page from their strat book. They're just gonna head straight into Bakery. They're gonna ignore this from this time around. And they're just gonna go for, uh, you know, straight into side. They're gonna ignore this map control. And they're going straight into the kitchen rather than last time. Last time they went around from upstairs and down the stairs. But this time they're going straight through kitchen. Which is, oh, let me actually say that, they actually did that last time as well, but not as, uh, not as full frontal as having four people. Uh, and they're droning in now. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Noetic That's is going to change up here a little bit, as last time around they had actually attacked Freezer and they had a little bit of ver Freezer uh, vertical control there, but they know mm -hmm. how much it costed there with their roam and getting uh, that uh, roam clear on the red stairs specifically was just not worth uh, for them. And looks like Kex is going to tank Sledge a little bit here on the next to the museum window here and Gooky he, he's gonna peek the breacher onto the onto the bakery area but it doesn't look like anything is gonna pan out as Zofia is gonna take down Kex 
on Jaeger, on the roam here. The roamers, again, uh, they're gonna go down early. And F2, he's gonna answer back. Last time with a shotgun, this time with the SMG 11. Kaneki, what a great shot there. Onto Clutcher, I believe. I mean, it must have been really good because, I mean, I, I don't even know how you landed from that distance. F2 getting aggressive on the breach, taking down the sledge, making sure that that babe goes out, and he basically, I mean, he practically took out two players here. It's now 1v4, looking very rough for Noetic. Uh, and he's, he's, taking, he's taking it slow. It's all he can do. He's going to take it as slow as he can to try and uh, prolong the round, try and get as many frogs, frags as he can, because he knows it's a very, very difficult and hostile situation he's going to be going into. Uh, everyone holding their angles because they don't have to push, and they know that the uh, the that they have to put, uh, the attackers have to push in uh, through. Oh, okay, what well, doesn't really matter. Straight, straight kill for at the end there. Watching that angle, and what can you do? It's, it's such distance. You're not going to be able to aim. You're not going to be able to aim that well from that distance, uh, even no matter what gun you're doing. And it just defenders took that round way harder than uh, than you'd expect from the first round. Definitely. I mean, Goody with that great shot there on the double door from great distance as well. And a great transfer there, making sure that he's landing those shots on the Zofia, on Naku there, closing it out for his team. So QVG actually took the next uh, the next round here. And I mean, a 1-1 scoreline here. I mean, QVG definitely came in here to play. And no, Eric, uh, they tried to adapt. They tried to ignore the room. But it look, didn't look like it worked out for them this time around. Although I'll give them that they had the right idea, in my personal opinion. It definitely looked like they had the right direction. Uh, Defenders, protect your it, moving towards the right direction. Attackers. But, yeah. but it just didn't work out at the end, you know? Yeah, it definitely looked like they were going the right way, doing the right things. It's just it came down to it. Angles, frags. What can you do? You got one man dead, two man dead. You're down to a, two v, uh, you're down to a 3v4. Uh, and it's just, it's very difficult to come back from a 3v4, especially on this map, which is so defender heavy. And especially when you've got so many Nitro Cells on the enemy team as well. <laughs> Nitro Cells, a lot of area denial, a lot of explosives, and what can you do? I mean, definitely, at the end of the day, we are uh, watching an FPS here at its core, and if you aren't able to win your gunfights, you're gonna lose the round at the end. But I mean, we've seen Noetic really pull out these crazy clutches, these crazy rounds that they shouldn't win as well. And I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna deliver some some more here, even on Cafe. So it's just one of those rounds that you know you just gonna give it to you kind of give it to the enemy team, and you just say, all right, they just you know they had a good round, they hit their shots this time, and now it's time to kind of bounce back here. Now we're pushing onto the balcony, going up to the roof. On the attackers, lots of shots fired. They have, there's no no landing, uh, no bullets landing. But we're looking. Natural come now. One kill out. Nice, uh, Natural cell, Natural cell pick. All right on the on the right of the roof. I don't think he had a Found camera there even. I think it was just no. straight up game sense, just making sure first. that you're landing that C4 when Sledge is opening up that hat. Just great timing and great game sense. Uh, maybe even possibly a great gaming chair from the Valkyrie there, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's taking the that's taking Keto off the board there. That's your carry the previous map around, and I mean, it's a really important uh, pick anyways, just because it's that it's that sledge and it's usually that vertical pressure off the board. So I'm sure QVG is gonna be happy for that one. No trade here, and can I just gonna try to get another one here on the roof here onto that oh AC God. balcony? Uh, he's not gonna land land any shots, and I'm not too sure if that he's actually aware of Sky's yellow yellow ping is gonna come out. And he's gonna look for a possible wall bang here, or no, actually, just not gonna give away his position here. He's just gonna sneak up on this Valkyrie here, and Kaneki, he's gonna actually win onto Clutcher there on the AC window. He's gonna take another one here onto the museum. Triple kill for him. Ooh, I got the Valkyrie pushed out and been denied the area that's pushed out because the uh, mouth fire could bring out them. But, oh. More shots. Defenders. One down the window. Double okay. double kill ring out the window from Googie. What is that? Sir Googie with a double kill jumping out the balcony window. What a play. Just like that. <laughs> Simple as. No no there's no practice in that. You just jump out the window, you get a double kill. Just jump. It's just all in the moment. You just feel the moment, you jump out the window. Van Halen are loving their life right now. Just, just, just jump, right? Jump, exactly, jump. <laughs>
Yeah, Nothing definitely. gets down other than gravity. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I mean, QVG already taking the second uh, round in a row here. Um, winning, uh, I believe it was reading. So they still have arguably the strongest side here on Cafe here. For most teams here, that is Bar uh, and Cocktail uh, as their third side. And I mean, I, I'm at this point, I'm curious how it's gonna look like because they have those, uh, they have another C4 again from Googie. And landing that C4 that last time round onto that sledge, it definitely needs to, you know, he needs, he, he can't escape it. He needs to open those hatches. He has to sledge those. He has, he has to kind of um, make, make that a boom for his team to just be able to push into the building. That's one of your primary ways to just push in. I mean, otherwise you just repel in or just sneak up from like bakery or like the bottom floor area, but it just that just takes too long and no team wants to do that. So he's definitely gonna need to go for these hatches and Kito, he will need to be careful this time around as a, uh, you know, this time around is, is a little bit quiet in cafe, not as he was on clubhouse. Yeah. Um, and he, 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 would, he would want to, you know, do a little bit of more work here for his team. I mean, the very thing, common thing on this map is to, uh, there's a, a hatch above the stairwell that you can blow up and you can actually peek in for, uh, to the secondary site. Oh, actually that's uh, site A, yeah. Uh, you can peek in from uh, breaking the wall. So, uh, maybe the attack is going to take that play. No, they kind of need it at this point. They, do want, they don't want to be 3-1 uh, down. So maybe they want to go into Skylight, try and get some frags, but it's very difficult to do it from the main Skylight. And that angle, actually, you can see it there on the cam. It's a very easy angle to hit, but very hard angle to uh, actually get your frags from. Yeah, definitely. There are definitely some players, usually your Ash players, right? Right on the Ash. Basically, right from spawn, they're going to run in straight with a pistol onto the roof and they're going to peek that skylight, but it's not going to happen this time around as we don't have an Ash here on the board. And uh, I mean, it doesn't look like that's the way that these teams, they want to, they want to, they don't want to do things that way. They want to go. Uh, Noetic, they want to play a bit more strategically here. They want to go for this uh, pressure here on the side. They want to go for the map control. Uh, they want to make sure that their presence is known, but they don't take any unnecessarily unnecessary gunfights, right? Exactly. Unnecessary gunfights just going to lose them, like, lose them around. Speaking, speaking of, of... <laughs> speaking of gunfights, Googie uh, getting another kill, just showing how good he is. Oh, I say that. Uh, he then gets fragged straight away afterwards. But yeah, that's a caster <laughs> curse for you. I mean, it's a great curse, trader. Yeah. A great <laughs> curse there. For, uh, a great curse. A great trader from uh, <laughs> from Naku on the Zofia here, trading back onto Googie. And I mean, one minute for the attackers. The defenders still have the uh, most amount of map control here, uh, as the attackers are gonna trade uh, head right into reading here. And Goody is still gonna hold on to the white stairs here. He's gonna try to land. The shots on the clutch here, but he won't be able to take his head off as a lot of damage is going to be done to Goody as he's going to head back onto the top white area. And Zofia is going to get another frag here. I'm not too sure what happened there, but regardless, Clutcher is going to get a uh, trying to get a picks here on the cocktail repel. Goody, he's feeling that pressure. F2 is going to go down trying to flank crack. Crack, he's definitely aware of that one and he's going to take uh, F2's head down. Goody, he's gonna take another one. I think it was actually the player outside the Clutcher. The, uh, the player on the repel. Goody, I, I feel like it's up to him right now and up to Kaneki. And as I said, he's gonna try to jump out nice. and they won't, that just won't work out for him as uh, Kaneki was just really aware of that. Uh, and Kaneki is actually gonna be in a 1v3 situation here. Plant is gonna go down in the cocktail area, I believe. Uh, and he's gonna just try and retake here. A little bit of shots here towards the top wide area. And he won't be able to land those. Naku with a great pre-fire on the pixel area. He's going to close it out for his team. I mean, really well played by the attackers there. A little bit unconventional. A little bit of an unorthodox attack uh, on yeah. the cocktail area there. Uh, just going for those repels, you know, just kind of repelling in here. In there after getting those frags um, with the repels. And just kind of repelling in at the right time. Putting the plan down. Well played overall, and I mean, two rounds on the board for Noetic and on Cafe, that's already a, a really good scoreline. Because let me tell you that, if they finish here 2-4, Noetic can still really win this. It's a really, uh, usually a really heavily defender-sided map. And when you get two on the attack, that's usually the moment when you're like, especially this early on, I mean, it's there's still two rounds to be played here for Noetic on the attack. That's what I mean by early on. And yeah. 
when you already have two, you kind of feel confident because, all right, guys, we kind of achieved what we wanted at this point. Uh, let's see if we can go for this third, maybe even that fourth, and then we're gonna completely dominate them. But you're already comfortable, right? Because you know when you're gonna switch, when you're gonna switch to that defense, you're gonna kind of gain that momentum. But besides that, you're also gonna go on the advantageous side here on this map, um, and you're gonna have a higher chance here of winning rounds once you swap to the defense. So definitely comfortable here. Two two. Uh, we're gonna see where Noetic takes this. We're going back to kitchen and prep room. Is it prep room? I think it's prep room. Uh, kitchen and prep room from the first and second uh, initial rounds. It was good for QVG. Going back to this, uh, going to this map because you see the amount of uh, control over the uh, map they have down there and control the sites. And it's looking quite good for Q uh, QVG to go back to this area. And shots fired already into the windows. Just Definitely. I mean, shots fired already this early in the round. Maybe a little bit of a spawn pick there. I'm not too sure. We didn't really quite catch that. Um, but I mean, QG is going to go for the same exact roam. And Noetic, it looks like uh, they kind of learned from the previous time around. They decided to go for this roam clear. They decided it's worth it at the end. We're going to trade these roamers out. Uh, we're going to take the map control the hard way, but at least when we go towards execute, we're going to be a bit more sure of what we're doing, right? Because last time around, they tried to ignore the roamers. Uh, they didn't even get the opening kill, but it still didn't just didn't, didn't work out for them. Exactly. And, I mean, if you see what happened to the roamers last round, they both in, uh, died in the first first minute and a half of the round. It's very difficult to be able to, uh, to, be able to defend against that, especially against 3v5 or 3v4, whatever it was. But... Without the without the roamers, you don't have much information. But now you got that Valkyrie, which so with more cameras, more information. You don't need those roamers. You just need people by the site. Uh, but now maybe even potentially playing for those C4s. Exactly. But I mean, they have how many C4s? Two C4s definitely. It does a Valkyrie probably has a C4 as well. So it's three C4s. The C4 players they can bring out of this. The amount of kills they can get out of them. We saw uh, a kill earlier in the game on Sledge, on Keto. Uh, yeah, but... definitely. Tem Street, we might see more of that play. And that was a very good play from, uh, from uh, earlier in the game. Yeah, and it looks like F2 was looking there for a little bit of a pick on the vertical play here. I think he has a pretty good track record on uh, making sure that he's securing those vertical picks from down below uh, onto the sledge or wherever else is playing those uh, vertical holes, you know. I don't think they want to uh, challenge him too much anymore, no Eric, on those verticals. And it looks like they're going to you know, they're already gonna uh, put some pressure here onto the VIP area. Kix is gonna take Zofia down on the VIP window here. He's he's gonna make sure that he's gonna open the round up for his team. And Eric, they're gonna push forward. They're gonna make sure that they're gonna open that freezer wall. The execute is definitely coming from freezer side here. QPG, they know where it's coming from. Now it's up to them to just kind of rotate the players around, making sure they're gonna land these shots. Kex is on one HP, and Clutcher is gonna take him down at that. Uh, 4v4 here, 20 seconds on the board. Sky is going to just kind of drone ahead. Oh, it looks like the freezer wall is actually not open yet. And it's 20 seconds on the board. It doesn't look too good here. Maybe um, grenade is going to go out there. here. It doesn't look like anything is going to land. Crack on, on the vertical pressure here is going to get a really important frag for no Eric Kugi. He's going to answer back. And Kito is going to run in from the freezer bridge. He's going to attack the smoke. Take another one down with him. Smoke canister is going to is gonna go down, but it doesn't look like it's going to damage Crusher at all. Crusher is going to go down. going to leave Crack in a 1v2 situation. On, with the vertical control, it looks so good for Crack right now. He just needs to make sure that he's going to hit those shots. I don't think that... Uh, flank think gonna nice. Oh, wait, a flank here from Googie. Ooh, and it, he's not going to catch him right at the right time. He's going to catch him on the drop, though. And the smoke. The canister. Game over. He's going to get Cookie. And that kill. He's going to get the, the crack here. Oh, no. I mean, it was such a nice try. That flank, I'm pretty sure that flank was called out and it kind of uh, forced. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of forced the Nomad to drop down the freezer hatch a little bit. And he just dropped down into the smoke canister there. So unfortunate. It looked so good for him. You know, having that top control, having that vertical pressure on the plant, just kind of, well, basically you can't even touch the diffuser when he's there. So yeah. a very w good play there from QVG and from that Valkyrie. I'm not sure who it, who it was. I think it was Kaneki there on the Valkyrie. Just uh, kind of going for that. It was, it, it, was yeah. it was Kaneki. I just got confirmation on the Valkyrie and just kind of making that play, going for that flank. 
making sure that he's putting enough pressure on the Nomad to either, you know, take a gunfight with him or just jump down the hatch. He decided to drop down the hatch. At the end of the day, I mean, you just gonna make a decision. You go for one or the other. He decided to drop down the hatch and he kind of dropped to his doom there. He was able to pick up Valkyrie right behind him, but it just Man, wasn't enough because he's in the smoke canister. What that. can you expect from the man, right? Like, what can you, what can you do more? I mean, the, uh, if you look at it towards the top, he didn't, uh, he didn't have uh, an insane angle on the bomb, so he couldn't really hold that angle in the first place. The issue he had, of course, was he was in that one room. He couldn't go back because he had to watch the bomb, but then he couldn't drop down because he was going to be in the smoke. It was a very tough situation for him. He just needed to, perhaps if he pushed the smoke, rather than waiting behind him, but of course, you got someone like, you got the uh, Valkyrie right on his heels. It's a very difficult round for him to do. If he had maybe a better angle on the bomb, then maybe he could have done more. But the angle he had wasn't sufficient enough, and that end, uh, ended up being a defused bomb because of it. So yeah, not definitely. Much done there. I mean, a difficult one v two for the Nomad there when you think about it in retrospect. Mm. Uh, but I mean, enough about that. We're gonna straight. We're gonna head back into reading here. That uh, QBG actually won pretty dominantly from what I remember last time around, as. Uh, Goody, I'm pretty sure, just got so many frags onto the AC balcony and then towards the end, I believe it was a Kaneki um, or a Guki. It was one of them. He just jumped out uh, out of the piano window and just kind of, yeah, it was Guki there on the Aruni, I just remembered, and just kind of jumped out, securing the last two frags for his team. And I mean, it was. Same, like, you know, hope we see something yeah. similar. We want to see those type of plays. We want to see the. Uh... It's not exactly imaginative because we, we've all seen it before, but it's those type of plays, those confident plays. We need those type of plays in, uh, in situations like this. Definitely, but at the early C4 from Goody, if you remember, it was really important for that round. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not going to happen again as the opening frag this time is going to come out from Skies on the Nomad, I believe, or sorry, on the Yana, I believe. Uh, onto Kaneki here. Um, He's gonna get the opening here, and they're gonna go for a... They're gonna actually move past the AC control. They're gonna go forward toward Fireplace already, as the wall is gonna get opened up. F2 is gonna jump out, but he's not gonna find anything, it looks like. He's just gonna head back into Garage here, as nothing is gonna pan out of that one. Uh, Goody and the attackers are just gonna slow down a little bit. The defenders are gonna hold, it, gonna hold the angles here a little bit. And Nako, he has perfect information on the Arvuni here. Double kill from for Skies here already as he's gonna put another one on the board with that nade. Really important one for his team already. And he's gonna try and make it a 3-3 scoreline here moving on to defense. Considering, uh, considering there's only two frags, that was actually a rather calm round. You'd expect a lot more from uh, from Noetic at this point because they were being very aggressive for the last uh, for the last round, last two rounds. But it's very very calm considering. But uh, of course, of course, you're not going to be able to do that uh, in retros in retrospect. You need to be calm before you rush in because you can't be getting tracked up. Oof! Goody is going to get lit up here by Skies, I believe, and he's going to take so much damage. I believe he's like on one HP, and Skies is going to finish him off. His Clutcher is going to get another one onto Kex in a one v five situation for Googie. I mean, we've seen him do amazing things but i don't think we're gonna see him pull off that one and i mean he won't be able to as the nomad is gonna take him uh right off on the museum hallway right there and i mean a flawless round for noetic 3-3 three, three scoreline on the attack as i said before putting two is amazing but putting three wow you're really dominating from my point of view noetic you're dominating right now and they're gonna mm -hmm. head in with confidence here onto the defense. They know that they, got, they have the momentum on their side. They won the previous round and they're gonna look towards winning the this next one on the defense. You know, they're gonna try to get more, maybe a bit more aggressive or even if they play it just completely, um, uh, completely by the book, regardless, you're just gonna have the advantage on cafe defense. Exactly, it's one of the, like I said, like I said at the start, like we said, we throughout this uh, entire series so far, it's one of those maps very easily defended, very uh, defender side of map. And defender Noetic pulling a 3-3 three, three right at the start, defenders. even though it's defense sided, very impressive. And they, you're gonna see if, you, uh, if they can pull back from, uh, not pull back, but you know, they're gonna see if you can uh, pull ahead the from this 3-3. Three, three. And the chances are looking pretty good for them and pretty dire for Q, uh, QBG Esports. But we won't know until 20 seconds time when we end, uh, when we're going to attack. Uh, like spawn. And we have sites in. I can't remember the name of this area. That's a. Uh, <laughs> 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 
There you That's go. fine. <laughs> for you, I can actually regard it as, I believe, the strongest site on the, on the entire map, in my personal opinion. It's just so hard to attack, just because a lot of teams play it so aggressively, and it's so hard to take the map control. As you can see, those freezer, that freezer wall being opened, that toilet wall being opened, uh, those ADSs for those Goyo shields, just play those Goyo shields and that uh, regular shield as well. Just kind of having a three shield set up here, kind of playing those as mirror windows a little bit. Um, and it's really hard to get rid of those positions. I mean, if you allow the defenders to play there and you don't get rid of those shields with some utility, they're just gonna play it and gonna keep peeking you and they're always gonna have that advantage with the, you know, with the head glitches on that shield and obviously they know where you are, you don't always know where they're gonna peek from and you can't always predict and pre-fire correctly. So, I mean, yeah, it, it, that's a really strong setup and that's why, I believe that's one of the reasons why Cocktail, Doffler, and Cafe is just so dominant. And I mean, a complete miss on the C4 here from Clutcher, as uh, he's gonna waste that one entirely in skies. He's gonna try to get one on Doffler, and it looks like the attacker just completely oh, dropped the Doffler here. Very Kex. confident play, right? We've got wow, three dead, we got three dead on the right side. This and they're gonna get all the players on Cocktail. Googie is gonna catch the rotate off crack here on the white uh, stairs area and they're gonna leave Clutcher and essentially a 1v3 as Goody is down on the floor and it doesn't look like they're gonna pick him up. Clutcher is gonna make it a 1v2 actually, a double kill for him and he's gonna jump the window, uh, the rotate in freezer and Gookie is gonna close it out for his team. He's just gonna, you know, uh, making sure that he's getting those important last picks that uh, player rotating up the white stairs, that last frag of, of the round, making sure that um, Clutcher is not able to actually live up to his name and clutch out the round on that Goyo. Uh, just overall a very solid round for QVG. Just completely ignoring Noetic um, on the on the piano side there because they probably noticed with the drone work, I believe, that they're really heavy setup with three shields, a lot of ADSs, a lot of angles towards the piano area there. They just said, all right, guys, we're just going to ignore this this part of the map. We're going to go for the other one. Let's drop this card. Let's put some pressure on the cocktail area here. They have a lot of roamers below. I believe we can flood the site. And a great Defenders call there by whoever called that. By yeah, you can see how common uh, the, uh, the last kill was. He's just, he's just peeking from the window. Destroys destroys a bit of electricity stuff. And then goes straight onto straight onto the kill. You see how e easy it was that last frag. And you can see how calm the team were right to the end. Which is what you need in this map if you're attacking. If you're attacking. You need to be calm. You need to... Play it by you need not really play it safe, but you need to just play it by the book, and you can have that uh, inventivity if you need it. But you can see just that that corner peak, you, it's going to be expected. You're going to see the window peaks. You're going to see all that stuff, and there's going to be a lot of angles that you can just see everyone from, and it's just by the book, the right uh, textbook play right there. Yeah, I mean a very confident round by QVG. Uh, all in all, right, dropping down the skull at the, the right time, just kind of reading the round uh, correctly. But I don't think Noetic is going to fall for that one again. I think they, they're they going for the same shot here. They don't want to change, which I, I can I can definitely agree with. I don't think they definitely they don't need to change the strat here. They just need to change the way they react here, the way they play a little bit. Need to be a bit more aware here. Uh, I don't think they're going to let these attackers drop the skull in the same manner. Uh, and it, it looks like QVG knows this. They're gonna go for these hatches, and it looks like they're gonna go for a little bit of a more traditional attack here, maybe going for the piano control here. I mean, you know the saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So, you know, they're gonna attack from the roof again. Maybe not from the skylight, but from the hatches. They get that control. They know that they can't get fragged off that easily on the roof. So they keep going in for the roof, making sure that, uh, making sure they can easily just, uh, push in and have control at least over one floor before they push into the next. And we can see in train museum, we got crack in train museum. Uh, two people pushing towards him, one up at the window, one on the uh, by the stairs. And it's a very, very calm round. They've got a minute 50 left. They need to, if, if frag doesn't happen now, then it's going to be a very slow round. Definitely. Uh, uh, one of the slowest rounds I believe that we had until now. And it's actually half the round already gone, and the attackers are establishing some map control, but no gunfights yet. I mean, barely even any shots fired on target here, if any at all. And it looks like uh, Ace is gonna just go and breach uh, that piano wall that is so very crucial for the attackers, and they're definitely gonna go for the piano take here. I mean, that's just the first step, though. They still have 
uh, they only have a minute to work with here, and they still have to clear Pixel, they have to clear the Aegir and Toilet, uh, they have to clear all of these ADSs. I'm not too sure what QVG is planning right now, unless they're going for another explosive play. I, I don't see how it's gonna work uh, for them this time around. It's gonna be very difficult. Oh, there you go. Ooh. One dead on the, one dead on the Wetic side. Good kill from Kex. Yeah, Kex is gonna get a really important frag onto the Jaeger there, that toilet player that I was talking so much about. One of the shields player there. It looks like Clutcher is gonna replace him and he's gonna get another one onto Kaneki. We're gonna make it a 4v4 for his team and he still has a C4 play in hand. Um, to deny plant or whatever he needs to do. And it looks like the attackers are gonna stall here a little bit. They know they're in a little bit of a, a strange and hard position here. They have to push onto white hallway here or onto long bar. They know that there's a Keto, there's a player here on the on the top white or white hallway area. Clutcher is gonna uh, try to land at C4, he's gonna unfortunately miss, but the Frank, he's gonna get a double here on the long bar area, and Googie is gonna answer back right onto Frank. A 1v2 situation here for Clutcher. Clutcher, are you gonna live up to your name? Kix is gonna put the plant down with 1 HP. Clutcher is gonna go for him, he knows where the plant is. Approximately, he's gonna close it out, Clutcher. You're definitely gonna live up to your name. You're gonna get the Zofia off the board here. I don't think he even... I don't think he even dropped a sweat, to be honest. It looked pretty confident to me. He didn't hesitate. He knew where the plant is going down, and he just ran towards it. I mean, like, like I said, it, does, it is one of those in the tin. It says what it does. If he is beans, then he's beans. If he is clutcher, then he is <laughs> clutcher right there. He's clutching that roundup when, uh, from a 1v2, and just amazing, amazing accuracy, major, amazing uh, hits right there. Definitely amazing awareness from clutcher and great game sense from him to know exactly where the Zofia is going to peek from and at what time and just being able to kind of capitalize on the fact that, you know, she has so much little health to work with and she has to land that headshot when she swings around the corner and you can land the, that shot anywhere on her body and you're going to win the round for your team. So definitely well played from him, making sure that a 1v2 is uh, is going to be a, uh, basically a knob for his team right there, right? That's a round that QVG somehow uh, almost managed to salvage, but Clutcher just kind of said no, and was able to close it out for his team. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, was that a uh, 1v2? It was a 1v2 Clutch, but how many kills did he get in the end then, Clutcher? Is it three? Um, not it, it, it was three definitely, kills. yeah, it was, those were three kills because he also got a one in the beginning of, uh, in right in the beginning of that execute, right after uh, Zofia killed, uh, yeah, from bathroom onto that shield in piano he definitely killed someone there but i mean enough about that we're gonna head straight into kitchen here uh for no eric and i mean they're looking a little bit shaky here on a defense don't you think definitely looking well considering how the first half went they're actually looking i think they're looking uh pretty shaky but of course that's, that's attack for you that's attack on this map it's gonna be very difficult and we've already see a frag coming off from uh from no Straight under that first window peak. They knew where they were attacking from. It's how it is. You see a window, you see a man, you shoot the man in the window. Yeah, that's, <laughs> not normal, that's not a normal sight, you know? <laughs> we're not going to have any window settlement today. No window settlement. Definitely. I mean, Nako is going to make that window play uh, work for his team as he's on the other side of the window play. Actually, he's going to play from the inside and he's going to take kicks on the Zofia uh, down and trading very little HP. And I believe that he also took the HP of Kaneki there as well, but I'm not too sure if that's what happened. Regardless, Kaneki is here on half HP. So, uh, I mean, a great advantage here for Noetic. And it looks like Nako is not going to stop. He's going to keep going for these frags. And he's going to, he's going to, he's going to fish and he's going to get one. He's going to get F2, that sledge on the reading area. He's gonna get the headshot and he's gonna take down the vertical player. That's so much pressure off the board. Not only yeah, it's uh, a 3v5, but it's the vertical player for the attacker. Is Nako. He's gonna keep fishing here, and he's, he's gonna get the, he's gonna get a drone and he's gonna go back. I definitely agree with that one. I mean, you have the advantage right now. No, no more bullet holes for you. They made a change there, and it's not available for you anymore, Googie. I don't think you got that memo. As uh, Skies is on oh, no, Eric is just gonna keep. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, challenging those vertical holds and onto the red stairs there. Kido is going to challenge on the vertical hold. Oh, wait, never mind. He's going to flank. He's going to flank, actually, and he's going to make it a flawless for his team. Amazing. Jesus. 
I mean, what a, what a round from uh, Noetic there. Just showing, again, showing them from the start of the last series. It just shows, it just goes to show that Noetic are one of those teams not to be messed with. They've pulled, is it two flawless rounds this uh, this series so far? It's a very, very, a very uh, good team. It's looking like a very good team. And uh, QVG looking very shaky now after that last round. Definitely. I mean, you gotta wonder how the mental is right now as Noetic is, I believe, the first time in this map that they're actually um, on the advantage here in terms of the score. So mm -hmm. they're actually 5-4 to four and they're only one for match point and losing the previous one on a 7-4 on a scoreline at Clubhouse, right? That's gotta yeah. get to you a little bit. It's gotta get to your mental a little bit. Uh, you're definitely... Uh, maybe thinking about the loss a little bit more now, thinking about how you need to, how you, you're gonna claw it back, what you need to change here, uh, what you need to do differently here, and I don't think QVG necessarily needs to do anything different here in terms of how they play the game, but I think their execution uh, needs to get a little bit better. They need to avoid those opening kills. They they don't want to give uh, no edit those. Uh, kind of spawn peaks and you know those early gunfights that uh, those 50-50s even for uh, QVG and Oedic they all, they more want to go for these um, from clears you know for the aggressive peaks on the drones for those info peaks when they have the when they have the info and they have some advantage to work with there you know because I feel like every time when it's a 50-50 I feel like Noetic is just winning it more uh, more often than QVG it's definitely uh, no. I think it's only one, definitely one of those uh, fragger teams. They know, they know the frags. They know how to aim, and it's just uh, watching watching this team today. Is just so it, it seems almost harmonious in the sense them being able to roam from one place to another, getting these frags. Uh, and uh, I will say though, however, uh, compared to the first match, QVG are looking considerably better than the first match. They are looking... Ooh, Sky's on very low HP here already in prep phase. I believe there was a little bit of a misplay there from Nako with the shotgun making that rotate. Uh, it's killing a little bit of a friendly fire, uh, friendly blood there on the floor and uh, around the fireplace area. And I mean... Maybe they just want to make You know? Maybe they want to be nice. But that's, that's, that's possible, but this map is a little bit close, so <laughs> I, I I don't think that's actually what happened there. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, it's always, it's always really, nice, you know. Yeah, but, but but I mean, but I mean, Skies, uh, he might not feel that old, but also he. he he might really feel it in the round. It's just one of those things. In Siege, when you're making those rotates, uh, with the shotguns, with the SAS operators, you really need to be careful because those pack a lot of punch and they can do a lot of damage to your to your team as well. You know, we're not playing Valorant here. There is a, a team kill potential. And um, you really want to be careful when you're making these rotates. Yeah, you have to always have to be careful. I mean, look how much health uh, Jaeger's on now. You can't exactly... Uh... He can't ex this guy's can't exactly roam around as easily now. He has to kind of play much safer than he uh, than he should have in the first place. And we're looking at push onto train museum right now, and push up the stairs. Oh, head, yes. head shot through the window! I mean, Ooh, through the wall and through the window, clutcher. What a great shot there! Great understanding of the map. To be honest, I think that one is Naku is gonna get another one onto the Kaneki on the museum museum hallway area, and Kex is gonna answer back onto Naku. But I mean, still a four v three advantage for the defenders here, and the round just barely started. I mean, that was a pretty saw, was two explosive, walls. wasn't it? Yeah. Is there two walls Sorry. in the window, or is it just one wall? Again? It doesn't really matter either way because that's just that's what information does for you at the end of the day. It doesn't matter where you are, the information Ooh, can kill you. is gonna take another one down with him as he's gonna take Kex down on the on the floor and then he's gonna finish him off uh, with that uh, with that AUG, right? So a 4v2 situation for no edit right now and I don't see them letting it go as Kido is gonna keep fishing for more and he's gonna get another one onto Googie there on the top floor there and Clutcher, he knows exactly where this attacker is playing and he's gonna he's gonna actually trade off a lot of damage here and Sky is gonna be able to flank Goody here, that unaware ace uh, got flanked by the Jaeger and he's gonna go down. I mean, 1v4 situation, I don't think you're expecting much from him. I don't think you're even expecting him to win that one gun fight. It just, uh, he's just what, stuck what in, between, in just between so many players round. there. Definitely a very explosive round there. A yep. great shot from Clutcher. 
through that wall. I believe it was only one wall, not two. But again, through that wall and through that barricade onto the, the onto the attacker on the AC balcony. There, just great awareness. They're kind of really feeling out the situation, really understanding of where the attackers might be. And you know, he's trying out his luck and really showing us that he has a great understanding of the map and kind of how uh, QVG is playing the map as well. Oh, we've seen the capital pick, like I said, at the start of the game. Before the reunion started, we are now seeing that capital pick come to play. Smoke's always good. Incendiary's good. Damage is damage. And it can also uh, deny so many, uh, so many uh, defense points as well. But not at all a common pick in any map, really. Because he is one of those... I have not seen him in ages in terms of uh in terms yeah, of my playing but of course i am not as good as these guys and i'm very much a lower rank than these guys at this point and you never know it could it could be a good pick and we will soon see as we go into match point six four to noetic after two comfortable wins but well, they're two comfortable uh round winning moments yeah and definitely uh a good trajectory for Noetic here, winning two in a row already. And I mean, that Capital pick that you were talking about, that it's such a rarity. And I believe it's a really strong operator if you utilize it well, but it got so hard to utilize it well once kind of Wamai got into the board and then uh, Capital's uh, win rate and pick rate really dropped off, even the ban rate as well. I don't think he's banned that often as well because those magnets are actually, they don't work exactly like ADSs, so they actually work on the Capital bolt. In the ADSs, they don't. So now, when Wama is not on the board, I believe it's actually a really good pick. Uh, making sure that you can use that fire to clear out the pixel area uh, with a bit more ease, right? A bit more finesse. You don't really need to uh, burn utility as much. You don't need to use your nades to clear out the shield. You just, you know, uh, kind of fire two, two fires toward the, towards the pixel area here. And it doesn't look exactly what that's what's going to happen now, but F2 is going to make sure that he's going to take Nako off the board here really early on. And Sky is going to go down as well by F2, a double kill from him. And Googie, he's going to answer, he's going to, sorry, also help F2 uh, at the same time taking out Kido. So a really explosive start here. Uh, we didn't get to see a lot of these kills, but I mean, a lot of really aggressive peaks here from the attackers. They're making it a really fast and early 5v2 for their team. I think now we're just put into such a dangerous position. Going for the Hail Mary with the bomb. They're getting killed behind the wall. But look, they've got the information. Gookie Two and Kex. on the stairs. Both, both are following each other. You can't train like that on this map. You're going to have people peeking from positions. And they just know. Look at that. Two different angles getting fired up from. It's very dangerous plays. And training like that, is gonna, you're going to get punished. It's now ma uh, still match point. Is it 6-5? Six 6-5, five? Six five, indeed. And we're going into yeah. this round and... What can you say about that round? It was saying that Noetic looks so good, and then all of a sudden we come, uh, we get QVG dominating that round. Two, three kills flawless. right off the bat. Three kills right off the bag, first minute in. Just almost no shots into the enemy team for Noetic. It's a very difficult round. And I mean, definitely. I, I just noticed that all the players here on both sides here are always fragging, always kind of... Uh, showing up at the right moment for their teams, and I, I don't think there is a there is a there is a player here that I just haven't mentioned uh, the name of throughout the series. Right, every single one of these ten players is just putting impact frags on the board. Kido is maybe having a quiet one uh, so far on Cafe, but on Club he completely carried his team. He, he had so much impact with that Maverick. Was uh, able to reach out those walls when he was attacking and on the defense, just consistently getting those uh, attackers on the roam. So, Goody, F2, Kex, and Clutcher on the other hand here for no Eric, uh, Crack, Nako, Skies. Every single one of these players is just consistently showing up and they're just answering. They're going back and forth here at each other's throats. For me, it's anyone's map right now and this can, uh, might, this might as well go to overtime, honestly. I, I don't know how this is gonna go, but QVG is looking good right now. No, Eric is looking also good. I, I'm not gonna make any predictions anymore. I just wanna see how this this one is gonna play out. Sugugi is looking exactly like he did in the first game. They're both looking... Uh, Sugugi is looking very confident in his plays. He's looking exactly the same. He did well in the first map, doing well in the second map. Maybe not performing as well, but definitely performing equally, uh, equally as good, if anything. Uh, or just below, but they're going for push on the kitchen now, outside the kitchen. 
Yeah, but still performing nonetheless. Oh. Skies with the pistol. I'm not too sure if you want to take that gun fight with the pistol, buddy. But he's gonna pull out his uh, his uh, primary weapon right there. When I say that, as F2, he's gonna challenge the Jaeger here, and he cannot afford any mistakes. He's gonna take out the Banshee. That's a nice little tweak there to the Banshee. That's actually a pretty recent one. And Kaneki, oh, he's gonna regret that one. Naku is gonna take him out. Is Kaneki, you were just staring right at him as Googie is gonna answer back onto Naku, and he's gonna have actually wedding control here. So F2 and uh, and Googie, they're gonna try and uh, get this bakery control from the defense here. Sky is gonna pick very aggressively here. He knows that worst case scenario, if they lose this, they're gonna head into overtime. So all the pressure is on QVG right now. Skies is definitely gonna hold this angle here, this pixel onto the double door, and he's gonna actually head the head off, get the head off F2 here. He's gonna take him out. Googie's gonna again answer back. He's gonna trade right back onto Clutcher here. Another beautiful headshot there as Kex, Googie, and Goody there. They're just gonna they're just gonna all surrender the kind of the bakery area there. Kex is gonna get another one, gonna put his team in a 3v2 situation here. Skies needs to get aggressive. He's gonna pick onto code here. I'm not too sure if he's aware of the player. It looks like he is, and he's gonna take. Oh no, he's gonna trade so much damage and he's gonna go down by Goody. Goody with that ace utilizing that great weapon to such a good degree. Kido, he's gonna try to trade some trade some shots here with a bakery player, but it doesn't look like it's gonna go his way just yet. Still a minute on, on the board here. A lot of time to work with, and the attackers are gonna already put the plan down. So it looks like uh, the Masha will need to try to go for a clutch here, and it's not gonna work out. This Kex is gonna definitely close it out for his team here. It's gonna be a, a very, very comfortable 3v1 here, and we're gonna head right into overtime here for the first time around in this series. And again, as I as I said in the in the preface of the previous round, it's anyone's game round right now. It's anyone's game. QVG looking very comfortable on uh, attack, much more comfortable than they did it definitely on um, on defense. Uh -oh. Maybe uh, I will say, you know, maybe not as as comfortable, but definitely some of their players they definitely have rehearsed this. They know the they know what they're doing, uh, and definitely Sir Googie will bring it up again. One of one of the, one of the he's a good player. Sir Googie's a really good player, and he's playing really well here. Getting those uh, getting those entry frags, getting those uh, trading frags, just one two straight off the bat kind of thing at the start of rounds. He's a good player, and Clutcher on the enemy, on Noetic. Defender also a very good player, and he's looking uh, very good in these moments, but we haven't seen much of him in the past two rounds. Yeah, and I believe it's time for Kido to actually try and wake up maybe a little bit for his team. I mean, I'm not expecting much from him on the defense here, as he's playing that anchor role, that Maestro, you know, he's so many times we just see him in these 1v4s, 1v3 situations, or in these situations where he's just like, it's just so hard to just clutch out or make anything happen for your team, but when they swap onto the attack, inevitably, as we are in overtime right now, uh, I want to see a little bit more from him, uh, doing a little bit of more work for his team, but again, they have Clutcher here, they have Crack, they have Naku, they have Skies, they have other players here to make sure that they They'll try to carry, you know, Eric throughout this overtime here. As, uh, you know, the pressure is really getting high. It's really getting up there. As both of these teams, they really understand that there's a lot of on the, on the on, at stakes here. And, um, you know, overtime is just one of those. When you get to overtime, the nerves are just getting to you a little bit more at that point. Everyone, when it comes to overtime, everyone's tired. It's like after a game of Dota when you're getting into 80 minutes. It's a very tiring game, and you don't, like, you don't necessarily want to be in this spot either. It's a very dangerous spot to be in, uh, especially for attackers side on QVG. It's very difficult to push, especially when you're getting those nerves, your finger's going to be itchy. Ooh, I've them. seen this somewhere already, and Kito is going to get the opening frag for his team. As Kex is going to go down on Clutcher, he's going to help out as well. He's going to get another frag, and Kaneki is going to answer back right onto Clutcher. But I mean, that's your echo That's your echo going down. But I mean, uh, you're making it a 4v3, and make it a 3v3 as Goody is going to take out Skies. That Two pain. minutes on the clock here already, and this round, these rounds, excuse me, are so very explosive. So very fast, the attack is gonna slow down here a little bit as it looks like, as Nako is gonna look for the, for the yeah, map controller here a little bomb. bit. He's gonna look for the vertical pressure here um, onto prep, on the, on the prep area here a little bit, as Kito is just gonna hold this angle on the bridge from the coat area. He just barely misses that head. Doesn't fire any shots, doesn't reveal his position. He barely misses that, he's going for the kill. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't a natural person? Yeah. <laughs> 
He tried That's a Yana clone. Uh, Unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he was sure for a split second there that maybe he's gonna put his team in the advantage there. But unfortunately, that was a Yana clone, and it is gonna go out. It's not gonna land. So it's already looking not too bad for Kido as he's gonna hold on to that. Oh wait, are we gonna get a? Okay, that's not gonna work out. I got a little bit excited there for a second there as I thought, uh, you know, Flores is gonna maybe get a kill out of his utility there, but that's not gonna happen. Although, Crack is still on very low HP, and as I said before, the deck did slow down here a little bit. Crack is gonna go down on the floor here, and Goody is gonna push onto the side here. Your ace actually making the entry here, and Flint is going down here, I believe, next to the bomb, and your both bo of your rumors are will be able to deny, and taking out the Yana as well as she pushes up, and Kido! Both of these players are gonna really show up for Noetic and they're gonna close out a round that actually I don't think even belonged to them. I mean, yes, Lucy had the the vertical angle and it didn't look like, like the attackers were aware of that, but how do you even let that uh, kind of slip by you, right? How do you not have a drone there or anything, any kind of information or, or how that, how was that Yana not pushing in earlier or even trading that gunfight at least at the very least if, uh, if Gugi was able to trade out uh, that kill on the Malusi, maybe he puts his team in a two v one situation there, and maybe it's a it's a little bit of, a little bit more winnable for his team. But regardless, I mean, I mean you can see the Noetic finally they finally found their footing again. They've gone they've gotten uh, losing those two uh, two rounds, two three rounds, and they just finally found their footing again. They're back in the game. Their minds are sharper than uh, than ever. I think pressure's getting to QVG. It's very much looking like it. Like that, that was an easy, easy double kill uh, up in the uh, up at the third floor, uh, third floor there. So I think uh, it just this is going to come down to whoever can hold their nerves the best. Noetic looking very powerful that last round, despite the fact it lose, uh, lose three of them. And QVG just having that pressure. They got he's planting the bomb. He's getting shot at for about two seconds there, one and a half seconds. Because that in uh, in a first person shooter, it's just a lot of time, and you can't be. Uh, and unfortunately, with uh, Sokugi, is just not at the right point at the right time, and gets killed straight after that initial uh, kill on the bomb diffuser. Definitely, maybe a little bit of lack of information there, but I mean, regardless, yeah, I agree with you. It was definitely a very uh, dominating dominating uh, round for Noetic. They won it in a very dominant fashion. I mean, getting those two opening frags, yes, they got traded out a little bit and, and uh, QBG kind of made it a 3v3 uh, in the previous round. And they're actually gonna, QBG is actually gonna get the opening round, the opening kill this time round onto the ace out of all operators and also onto Clutcher. So your hard bridge and your top performer for this map. So Noetic, you will need to rethink the way you're gonna attack this time round because no hard reaching for you. Uh, and when you're attacking Kitchen, it's just such an important operator and that's your only harbinger as well. So they have to rethink, they need to kind of um, uh, come up with something here, find an opening here uh, for the, on, onto the defense here to see what they, you know, what they can come up with because they need to do something crazy here to win this round without breaching any walls or any hatch. We saw from uh, the start of this match from QVG, uh, uh, QVG yeah. Uh, we saw them on Kitchen, we've seen the two wins right at the start, and when we saw, uh, I don't know whether it was the win or not later on, but at least a 66% win rate on this on this part of the map, and definitely uh, oh, at least maybe a 100% win rate. But it's just amazing how much, uh, how much QVG can do in Kitchen, and how much power they have over the game, over this defensive side. Definitely, I mean... 4v3 for Noetic right now, and they have a lot of vertical pressure. And QVG, it's it's because QVG just kind of after that first pick onto the ace, you, I believe it was called out. Guys, the ace is dead. Everyone should play safe. I mean, they are on match point right now for Noetic, and they don't want to make any mistakes. And they know that that ace early pick is enough to win them that round. Um, like all over, right? They don't need to do anything crazy now. They already made a crazy play and Nako, speaking of crazy plays, is gonna hit a really nasty shot onto Sir Googie there. A really a, a really beautiful pixel there as Kido is gonna get another one through that vertical uh through the vert vertical holds with the SMG eleven and he has a perfect draw on the Malusi there, giving the perfect information. It's guys is gonna actually get the Malusi, get the kill right there and it's gonna make it a 4v2 for his team. Is no Eric gonna actually club their back uh, Claude, they're back right into this win here. 
gonna win although they they didn't have the ace on the board i'm not too sure if they can make it work as keto is gonna make another one he's gonna take another one off the board here and gonna leave kaneki in a effectively a 1v2 situation if they're not gonna pick up naku it looks like they're actually gonna pick up naku and crack is just gonna hold on to that angle there he's just gonna play it safe he's gonna make sure that naku is up on his feet is able to trade out and is able to fight kaneki everything is up to you right now 10 seconds he's gonna watch the double door Kido is gonna pick out is another another operator is gonna pick from the bakery side double up here from the Five seconds uh, double door here and kaneki he's gonna get shot down by Kido. he's gonna close this round out and what a beautiful round by uh no by the attackers here, by no edit to make sure that they're definitely closing out this round and making it a comf I mean not a comfortable a but a but a dominant 2-0, winning that uh, that overtime without dropping a single round towards the end. I mean coming back from uh, ace dying really early in the round, I think it was a beautiful play by them. And I mean they definitely proved that they're the better team here, uh, being able to adapt like that. Yeah, you saw, I mean, we can see from the previous matches that uh, QVG had, they weren't quite up the top, definitely underdogs. And they've, I think they performed brilliantly over these two matches. Uh, and it's just, it just goes to show that you, never, you should never underestimate an underdog at the end of the day. Because that, I mean, it doesn't matter how much difference there is, teams play differently. And uh, after, this, uh, after this lovely series, it's nice to see that even. Uh, even top people, even people at the top can still be brought, nearly brought down by people in the lower half. Definitely. I mean, even gods can bleed, right? But I mean, it was only the, it's only the kind of the second play day uh, today for uh, Noetic. So we don't know if they're going to be so dominant moving forward, but it definitely doesn't look bad at all for them. I mean, they had to play their hearts out on cafe and kind of clawed back from that overtime, making sure that they're, you know, really uh, clutching up these important rounds and making sure that they're bringing it back uh, and winning that 2-0. Uh, not as dominant as on Clubhouse, but still really good performance from Noetic. And on the other side, we have uh, QVG there. Definitely playing well, playing better than I expected. We had a really close matchup. Uh, as definitely on Cafe, was really, really close. I mean, it was definitely anyone's game. And if one of these gunfights just goes the other way, uh, you you don't know what's gonna happen, right? It could have been a could have been a draw at the end of the day. I mean, we don't like draws. I don't like draws. I'm sure no one at home likes draws. But I mean, it could have been one, and that's not what happened. No, Eric was able to kind of uh, win that overtime. But I mean, it almost happened. So QVG, props to them, playing well, uh, giving us a really competitive match up here, a really fun match to watch, right? And if you look at that last round, what uh, last round boiled down to was just those angles. Got pushing in, they of course they're watching they're watching angles, but not sometimes not the right angle. And then you can see the Val uh, in the back the Nomad walking in in the last round. Look, it didn't look to the left, kept w looking forward, and there was a person way down, uh, way down the corridor. It's just it's a very difficult map to push through in the first place, and it just wasn't pushed into correctly, and that kind of cost them the round, getting two people killed off right at the start of the round, and it's just. Yeah. What can you do? It's a defender side of the map. It's a very fun game. Uh, and I think a brilliant performance from QVG, despite the fact that they lost. And I think a, uh, uh, I wouldn't say underwhelming performance from Noetic, but you can see that they are definitely better. And I think they could have performed much better. Uh, and you can see a few players are on, uh, on the second game who didn't perform up to uh, the standards of the first game. But what can you do? Uh, they are the better team. They did well. What else did I say? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, Keto was one of those players that kind of made it a little bit harder for his team when they uh, kind of played the cafe in the beginning, or at least throughout most of the map, right? Until they got into overtime, he actually uh, didn't have more than uh, three three kills on the board. And Keto is one of those players that I really expect to have a uh, impact frags because when i watched him last time around the previous play day i really uh, saw him show up a lot bringing in mm -hmm. those uh, really impactful rounds making sure that he's closing out these really hard uh, rounds for his team and that's what i was expecting from him on cafe and he did deliver deliver on clubhouse in the beginning on the on the very first map that's the map that they won really comfortably he was really fragging out on the harbage and 
you know, uh, that's not something that you see always. Um, and on Cafe, he struggled a little bit more. But I mean, on overtime, I believe he was one of those switches that just kind of got flipped, you know, for his team. And he kind of flipped that switch a little bit. He made sure that he's going to try and contribute more on the scoreboard uh, for his team. And he definitely did. And it definitely uh, showed. It definitely showed on the... Definitely showed on, on overtime there as uh, they won it. On overtime, it was pretty comfortable. I mean, making sure that you're getting that uh, entry kill on ace, on cafe, that's, and you know that's the only hard which they already uh, played against Noetic, attacking so many rounds before that, I believe like six rounds before that, right? So they knew that ace is their only hard beach or they only, they're only bringing uh, one hard beach alter alternatively, right? So you kind of saw it from the way that uh, QVG played. They said, all right, guys, we got the ace, we got the harbage, let's just kind of go back into the side. Let's play it a bit more passively here. And I mean, yes, it's kind of the correct play, it's kind of the correct uh, way to do things. That's the textbook way of playing it and kind of not getting aggressive, not uh, reaching too much, making sure that you're keeping your uh, manpower. But I mean, if that's not your play style, that's not what you're, what you're winning off, I don't feel like you should do that. And I feel like when QVG was winning, those rounds that they were winning, they were actually getting a bit more aggressive. They were flanking more, they were taking more gunfights. They didn't really win uh, rounds off playing uh, really smart, you know, play, playing off uh, 180 angles, crossfires, waiting for execute and just uh, kind of denying the plant, uh, clutching it up, right? They, um, I mean, they, yeah. relied, they relied way more on their gunfights and their skill yeah. when they were winning these rounds. And I feel like Although you got that ace early on, maybe that was your mistake that you kind of went back and played a bit more passively. You, I feel like uh, maybe keep fishing. I mean, you saw Noetic do that. They got the first frag, and uh, we saw, I believe, I don't remember who played Melusi. Maybe it was... Uh, uh, I don't want to... I, I don't want to just say names. I think it was maybe Cracks or... I think at one point, maybe, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. I think it was Nayok. I think, I think it was Nayok. Yeah. Uh, he he just got that first frag on a Malusi and just kept on fragging, kept on flanking, kept on mm. uh, getting uh, more frags there. But I mean, uh, yeah, it was it was a really beautiful series here that we that we got to cast, and we're gonna close it out right now. As it doesn't look like we're gonna have an interview, okay? Um, and unfortunately, but I mean, I really enjoyed casting with you tonight, and. I'm just gonna. Do you have any any words that you want to say before we just kind of end the stream off here? And just well, gonna... I'm sure I'm sure summarize what you said. Basically, it's a lovely game, lovely performance from both teams. Uh, underdogs can really uh, come back, but unfortunately, could not today. Noetic take this fight, uh, take this victory. Three-time champions, perhaps coming up to a four-time champion, and who knows what's gonna happen? We don't know. At the end of the day, and definitely said, lovely games. And it's been lovely to cast with you as well. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you, guys, everyone who's been watching until now. We're going to close it out now. I mean, I've been Leo. This was Hades. And hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Come back for some more Talent League in the in the next play day. Uh, as I don't believe we have any more, any more games in this play day. We're going to... So come back for next week, play day three. Hopefully we're going to have more exciting games for you. And that's it. Have a have a lovely night, everyone. Lovely night, guys.